Hello, one and all. Let's bring all to the table. The gaming table. Hold on a second. We are getting it all situated. What's up, Woody, Chaz, Ooh. Alex? Um, what is going on? We are playing the Orville RPG. I got my my gameplay book already with all my stats and all that. Um, for those of you have who have not played this game with us, we are looking for suggestions sometimes. So those of you in the chat, you will be asked to uh, to help us out sometimes along, along our uh, campaign, along with these missions uh, to, to help us figure out what to do. But last time, last month, we ended up uh, in a very interesting place. Woody, why don't you catch us up on what <laughs> happened last week? Yeah, uh, I'm actually posting the first photo to our, our gallery. Give me just a quick second here. Um, no problem. All the all the seconds you want. We're gonna this these are yeah. longer streams than usual. Yeah, okay. So um uh, 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 uh god damn it. <laughs> Where's the <laughs> photo I just posted? Oh we say okay. Avis damn it here. Yes, yes, that is true. <laughs> um okay, so uh welcome. Uh so for anybody who um, missed last episode. That is okay. We're going to indulge in one of the classic tropes of role-playing games. It's called the recap. Uh, <laughs> so previously um, on the episode. Previously, yeah. <laughs> so uh, what we're doing, um, Alex and I, uh, we have a company called Miniature Dragon uh, Publications Productions. Oh, good lord, I, we we recently rebranded. Yeah, publishing Miniature Dragon Publishing. I am with it. And uh, we have a role-playing game based on our premier comic book series, Cyber Symbiosis. And it is 5e compatible uh, with minor changes to ad address technology. And we are using that to run an RPG based on the Orville. And so uh, so that we don't have to get with the clunky, deal with the clunkiness of moderators, uh, we are using the Cyber Symbiosis Facebook page, uh, photo gallery to post photos of what's going on because I don't like having cameras straight down because looking at, at, at battle maps because players have a hard time telling where they are and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I like tight shots. Um, but last week, uh, we <clears throat> we started out with these guys on board a ship called the Redenbacher, which is a, a small uh, escort ship, uh, smaller than the Orville. And its role uh, was to participate in a large battle um, where the... Uh, basically taking place between seasons two and three of, of, of the Orville, we are finding ourselves in the midst of the Kalon War uh, and, and in, the, in the early days of that conflict. And the uh, Planetary Union uh, discovered a star mine, not unlike the Star Forge of KOTOR fame, and it was controlled by the Kalon and was using... Uh-oh. There we Sorry. go, you're back. I I touched my <laughs> microphone, you see, and I hit the button. <laughs> it happens. So, yes. So um, they were uh, mining a star, and the um, – well, that's not okay. So uh, a combined fleet of, of uh, uh, Planetary Union and Krill uh, battleships rallied together, only to discover it may very well have been a trap. Uh, the, um, the, the ships were repelled. Um, they, they were forced to flee, but in the midst of it, there was a um, there were boarding parties on board the Redenbacher, and they they managed to over overrun the ship. And our heroes here, who participated valiantly in the defense of the ship, were forced to retreat. And after a mad chase through space, they ended up on a planet. And the planet, uh, by the way, has a name. Um, Erg. I, uh, I had too many tabs open and only two screens. Um, okay, so uh, this the planet is known as Sindal, and it is. Um, a uh, um, uh, a pre-industrial or early industrial planet, uh, but is uh, also uh, frequented by space pirates. And let's uh, let's reintroduce our characters a bit. Um, Alex, you want you, you want to go first? All right. So my character is Cheshire, also known as Cat, and I may or may not be a uh, space pirate. But uh, otherwise, um, so we started a, my part in the brig, unlike the other two, which were definitely uh, as uh, guards and whatnot. And that's a general on mine. 
Chaz, if you would like to go next. Uh, okay, I am. Uh, I am uh, <clears throat> playing a gelatin. Uh, simply, you can call him Benny. Uh, and I am a uh, combat engineer. Uh, I'm sort of a. My class is sort of a cross between uh, Scotty and Worf. Uh, I do have, uh, I'm supposed to have, although the dice didn't reveal that last session, uh, <laughs> some excellent engineering skills and capabilities, uh, along with some excellent uh, combat training. But like I said, the dice didn't help me really reveal that last session. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did fine. Well, the, di the dice was dicey last time, I, I do have to say. Yeah. It was my first time using uh, game dice at all, except for to play craps or something like that, or uh, or uh, yeah, sorry, that game, sorry. Uh, I'm I'm playing Jay Pulio. I'm JP, of course, playing Jay Pulio, a Retepsian pilot who's very good at piloting things. And um, and my, uh, what, what's it called? My... Uh, my flaw is I have I am I have to say a bad one liner at least once every <laughs> single game, and but it's going to be a lot more than once if oh, if you sure, watched sure, last sure. time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and before we get started, I also want to do a special shout out uh, to my friend Ryder because he was the one that provided us with this wonderful miniature uh, of a gelatin. Uh, so um, yes, we the name be... Benny 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 the yes. gelatin Benny's miniature. Yeah, you thank can actually you, thank you. Uh, Yes, uh, so if you go into the Cyber Symbiosis Facebook page, you will see pictures of this wonderful miniature. Uh, Ryder has a company called Red Shark Miniatures. He does 3D printing, and he's the one who uh, provided us with, with this wonderful uh, miniature, which, uh, quite frankly, could not get anywhere else. And um, well, you may occasionally be seeing more, more of his creations uh, in the show when miniatures are needed. So, um, and I'll, I'll be sharing a link to his. Uh, he's setting up a new website, so um, otherwise you'll just find him on Etsy. Um, so we'll share links as soon as we have them. But uh, anyways, let's let's get the show started. Officially. All right. Oh, real quick before before we start, uh, Mr. Game Master. Yes. Sir. Um, talking the Orville is doing lots of things like this, like playing the the, the Orville RPG. We have um, all kinds of different live shows. We are the Orville. Uh, is when fans of the Orville join me live. Uh, if you're a patron of this page, you can click on the link in the description. Uh, enter your name to be considered to be one of the five that joins me next week uh, for We Are the Orville. We're going to be talking about the episode Into the Fold, uh, which is a, a great season one episode. We also coming up have uh, more of the union, different um, leaders in the Orville fandom community coming together to talk about the Orville and to talk about season four of the Orville, which, which uh, is coming up. They haven't started it yet, but uh, we 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 know they're starting to to give the the cast members and the crew are starting to give a little hubbub uh, online uh, more and more each day, and we and I have found out and the rest of the union has found out that season four is a go. It just hasn't been announced yet publicly because there's contracts and things like that. They have to do it basically when the studio wants to do it. I think September would be a, a very fortuitous time to announce the Orville, being that. The new Orville guide, official Orville guide, called the Guide to the Orville by Andre Bormanis, comes out on September 24th, I believe. Uh, hopefully, there's a link in the description to pre-order that. And we got other fun things. A uh, very special live show, or uh, yeah, live show coming up in July with some special guests to specifically talk about uh, the the Mocklin Sanctuary. Uh, that's going to be a great show. And I also have a live show on the 22nd of June uh, called the Orville Spotlight, which I have a guest star from the Orville from the episode um, Twice in a Lifetime. She played it. Uh, she played the um, the real estate agent trying to sell a house to uh, Isaac <laughs> and Charlie. We're going to be talking to her about uh, her okay. experience on the Orville, and she's a big fan of the Orville. Nice. But without further ado, let's... Uh, no, I do let's, have uh, one last thing. Oh, there you go. Actually, you do. JP, your character, what is your character's eye color? 
And the reason why I ask is I want to finish off the drawing that I did of your character. Oh, let's do a uh, a, a bluish purple. Sounds good. You know, you know for a moment for... there, I thought you were from Family Circus. <laughs> <laughs> Last time. Oh, there's no. Benny. There's Benny. Yeah, basically the, the, the bluish highlights that Benny has would be a great eye color for a uh, for Jay Sounds Puglia. Good. Right on. And then I'm working <laughs> on the character that I'm going to do. There's Cat. Nice. I can't tell which one's which. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, let's let's do it. So um, you guys, uh, at, in the last seconds of the previous episode, had gone into free fall, and uh, um, in in an attempt to uh, confuse the pursuing Kalon interceptor, uh, it was successful. And at the last second, you reengaged the engines, skipped across uh, the um, the lake, uh, and headed towards a town, nearly hitting the docks. Cruise over, and then. Um, Alex's character, Cheshire, uh, directs you guys to a landing point uh, in a field out, outside of town where you carefully let down uh, or sit down the ship. And as you do so, um, the camera pulls away and pans off to a large vineyard. And um, and where you, where you can see pe pe people work in the fields. There's a large mm -hmm. estate. It's very picturesque. And this, in the words, uh, um, Tales of the Union, episode two, flash across the screen. And then... Uh, <laughs> And then here we are, uh, coming back to the ship, and the uh, the the landing uh, ramp goes down, and you guys have a chance to exit out on into the fresh air. And by the way, I forgot to clarify something. Um, so what I was calling a Type One shuttlecraft was the shuttle that appeared in seasons one and two, mm -hmm. um, the one that Seth MacFarlane calls the boot. And then uh, and then the Type Two would be the larger, cooler looking one that you guys don't get to have right now, which is going to be the one from season two or season three. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I figure the older shuttles probably aren't just being mothballed immediately. They're good ships. So, Oh yeah. We need them. Yeah. So it, it, right. um, in the, in the shuttle, is there like extra clothing or anything of that nature? Uh, there is there's, but, but it's more like survival gear. Um, right. I as, uh, as grab that to... and throw it at uh, JP's character. Ah, <clears throat> you want to wear these? Oh, I hate turtlenecks. Oh no. Yeah. It's uh, definitely a better idea to do that. The locals have a bad, bad uh, knowledge about the uh, union. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I'll put it on then. And some of the uh, people from uh, that come down here don't exactly like the union either. Well, do you have any uh, a special uh, a special bucket for Benny to wear at least? <clears throat> I mean. You look great. I mean, you don't exactly have union uh, uniform there, Benny. Yeah. I'm naked. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay. So, assuming you guys want to check the survival, uh, you know, or the equipment on board, on board the shuttle, um, you're going to have uh, four spacesuits. Should uh, be writing this down. Make sure you got this down. So, or yeah, Alex, can you write this down as I dictate? Um, so, you you guys have four uh, four spacesuits. Um, there's going to be two light plasma pistols, and uh, there's also going to be uh, survival rations uh, and enough food that you guys could survive for about a month if, if you had to. Um, there's, of course, uh, survival clothing, uh, like emergency clothing. It's not going to be uniforms. It's going to be more like, as Alex correctly guessed, more rugged gear. Um, and then uh, you also have tools. And uh, there's there's a, a couple of handheld scanners if you need them, uh, the standard kind. There's uh, tools that are capable of doing um, some repairs to the ship. And um, uh, I think that'd be about would pretty much about cover it. Um, you know, the, the the ship's got just the basics, but enough for immediate survival needs. And, well, not uh, so fast, Kat, about with uh, getting uh, uh, any of those blasters. Benny and I are the officers. We get the blasters. We get the scanners. If you need a... A ruler or something. You can hold on to the ruler. Oh, I can have a ruler. Yeah. Oh, that is just fantastic. Thank we you. You can't be a ruler, though, but you can hold on to this one. Oh, you're too kind. <laughs> well, uh, Benny may need one of those guns because he he tossed his gun and turned it into a grenade. That's right. That's yeah. right. 
that that was a, an escape plan from. Uh, that's how we got here. That's how we escaped Kalon from the Renbacher. It, 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 it was definitely a good plan. So, <clears throat> um, Alex, um, as as I'm sure you were well aware, uh, there is a small bungalow not far from where you landed, um, that uh, you are intimately familiar with, uh, and um, so as far as the ship goes. Um, so, so Chaz, you're you're gonna be checking the ship. The ship has taken a lot of punishment yep. from from the flight. Um, it's uh, sitting at about thirty percent hull integrity. And as you're having a chance to check it over more thoroughly, it becomes uh, pretty apparent that you should not have risked going into quantum because the uh, one of the quantum rings is cracked. Uh, the sh the ship took a bunch of damage. Uh, it would be capable of flying around uh, for sure. But um, doing that would be risky because you, of course, would attract the attention potentially of the Kalon. And uh, so keeping it grounded might, might, might be the safer course of action. And going to Quantum, there's no way of knowing how long the ship would, would, would make it. And, you know, it definitely could not be pushed to high speeds and would not be able to outrun a, a Kalon ship anyways. So um, at the moment, uh, the safest place is for you guys to be boots on the ground. Um, and as at, as you guys are also uh, assessing that situation, uh, and Alex is turning attention to the bungalow, uh, there is this sh shockwave that reverberates through the air, and you guys all look to um, to to the mountains in the distance uh, where you see the wreck, uh, half of the wreckage of of of, of the the battle cruiser that you guys uh, were supposed to rendezvous with, striking a mountain range, and it's flaming and smoke is going into the sky and it triggers a massive uh, avalanche you guys can see you know from over 100 miles away and it's uh, pretty dramatic we need to find out if there's any survivors but it's 100 miles away it would take a little uh yeah i mean it's it would take a little little, little bit of a walk to get there it wouldn't be something you'd reach tomorrow um from my knowledge in town um, what about, uh, the vehicles? Well, uh, locally, um, the, the, this, uh, nation that you guys are near, um, is within the early stages of an industrial revolution. So majority of, of transport still occurs, uh, via like, uh, wagons and horses. Um, you haven't been here for a couple of years, so there may have been some advances in that time that you're not aware of. So I'll say to the other two of like, we should head it over to the uh, town first, get some supplies, and then we can uh, trek up and see if there's any survivors. With what, a horse? Oh, come on. It's a space horse. Yes. Okay, space horse. Okay, as long as it's a space horse, I, uh, we'll give it a shot. Hey, we do need to find the, the. We're supposed to rendezvous with those people. We need to see if they're alive. Uh, What's hey, left uh, of them? Alex, uh, while you guys are having this conversation, a man comes rushing over. Um, looks do like I recognize? You do. He's uh, he's the groundskeeper. What's the matter, Willie? <laughs> groundskeeper Willie, yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, the, 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 so the, 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 this man comes uh, um, rushing up. He has um, his skin's kind of like a of an earth tone color, a brown. And he's he's panting and uh, collects himself as quick as he can, and he is uh, uh, he's kind of got a kilt on uh, instead of pants and, and you know like a, a dirty shirt because he's been out working. But he's got uh, very bright blue hair. His eyes look cat like, and he has pointed ears. But he um, and, and he's a little shorter than a human would be on average. And then he kind of collects himself and says, "Sir, I'm sorry, I did not know you were coming. Uh, we would have been better prepared if we'd received word." Oh, no, it's quite all right. This was a bit of a uh, last-minute um, expection. What's uh, going on? Uh, oh, well, we've uh, kept kept up your your uh, um, your home uh, as, as as per the agreement. Um, I have the keys if if if, if you're ready. Uh, do you have any transport to get on? Um, we need to get to that mountain as soon as possible. Oh, right. That that is. Uh, quite a sight. Uh, uh, I I don't know yet, sir. We can see if we can work something out. I, uh, the sooner the better before any of the others uh, might get to it. Should we be expecting more of your crew on, on this visit, sir? I don't know, but there might be. Well, that or others from other crews. 
uh, very well. Uh, well, at the very least, let uh, let's make sure that your 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 home is unlocked. Come with me, please. He goes, yeah, Benny. Who is this guy? Are you coming along? I don't know. As I'm walking out. <laughs> So they're they're uh, yeah. So Ch Cheshire and and the groundskeeper are, um, are 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 approaching the bungalow. Um, so this groundskeeper. So I don't necessarily have every name for every random NPC. No game master does. But um, would somebody like to give the groundskeeper a name? Somebody in the in the chat. Uh, we need a name for the groundskeeper. Uh, did you say the groundskeeper? Yeah. I I I I fear for the name that Tipsy Flipper will propose. <laughs> Let me put that. Uh, Kakaris? I love Mark it. We're doing, that. We're doing that. That's a good one. <laughs> okay. All right, you guys. Um, yeah. Okay. Hide White. <laughs> I like that. McKeeper. <laughs> yeah. I wish Kakaris had a car. Yeah. All, All right. right. <clears throat> or Karkaris. So uh, you guys are led to a... Um, to uh, the bungalow house and it uh, the groundskeeper uh, pulls out some keys and puts them in opens the door and uh, gestures everybody in and when you guys enter you find that the um, it it, ha it it is um, a large uh, open um, open air uh, living room type space uh, full of uh, various trophies and um, pieces of art and uh, a, a, a assorted knickknacks uh, there there's a couch uh, a, a chair um, you know, pl plenty of chairs to sit on. Uh, there is uh, a bar uh, for entertainment, uh, enter entertaining guests. It also has an adjoining kitchen um, and uh, and and a couple of bedrooms. Okay, you guys do what you need to do. I'll be over at the bar. Hey, Cat, you got any brewskis in here? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, Goes. Um, uh, um, <laughs> So his name oh. is uh, Car Car, um, Carcaris, Carcaris. So I will say Carcaris. Uh, um, go get a vehicle for us, and then I'll go over to the bar and see about uh, pouring up uh, one of the brews that I've made. All right. Yeah the uh, the, the the bar is uh, well stocked. Uh, with uh, local vintages, uh, though you find the majority of the alcohol here here is wine. Oh, okay. So Lucky. as soon as he leaves, I'll turn to you two and say, "Of like, we definitely have to get to any survivors if there is any. If um, any of the crews get to them first, they'll if the especially if they have uh, union uniforms." they'll be shot first and then uh, reloaded and then shot again. Oh, we got to help them. We also got to get repair parts. Anything that'll, any, anything that'll help us repair the shuttle. Uh, do you have a list of uh, things that you need? Because we'll have to uh, see about trading, bartering, or uh, stealing it. I mean, sorry, liberating it. And here's <laughs> your drink. <laughs> or definitely gonna need some Hoosie Watsits and uh, and uh, Ooh, Hoosie Watsits. Yeah, some Hoosie it's Watsits. It's been a while since uh, they Duct used tape. that model. <laughs> Benny is more than qualified to figure out a list of of uh, what what you guys would need. Um, he'll 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 just need a little bit of time to work with the ship and figure out you know like uh, exactly how bad it is. Uh, Mike, uh, they will just need duct tape. I believe they got the bubble gum covered. Um, yeah, I have uh, <laughs> on, under my professions, I can uh, jerry rig ships. That will make you very useful. I yeah. think so as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, his proficiency is doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> There's no mix up, duct tape can't fix up. Yeah, I, I years ago when I was on a service call doing um, I was, I was talking to a guy from Pepsi and I asked him what. Uh, what he does when he doesn't have the right tools, he says he uses the wrong tools. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Tools are oh. tools. All right. So, um, Chaz, while you're taking in all of the, um, you know, the the various uh, pieces of art and trophies and so forth in the room, something does draw your attention. There is a 
black powder pistol hanging on the wall with a bag of ammunition and uh, and a powder horn. Hmm. Where'd you get this? This is ancient. Well, it was, um, one of the craftsmen uh, did this for me after uh, saving saving her daughter. You mean in the town? Goes I, I one of the big cities. Well, I'll, I'll leave that you fancy it to you, Benny. What well, I'm I'm sorry. What, what did you oh. say, JP? Oh, I said I'll leave I'll leave that gun to you, Benny. I I don't uh, understand weapons that don't have buttons and settings. <laughs> it does have a point click interface system. <laughs> <laughs> The only difference is that you have to uh, put in a cartridge. It's oh, this it's, old it's... type of device that you uh, do, but it still has a point-click interface system. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm fairly, I'm fairly familiar with the, uh, the old version, the original. Yes, version. but it still is able to do long-range brain surgery. <laughs> That's what Alex calls shooting a gun. <laughs> yeah, long distance brain <laughs> surgery. <laughs> yep. So, Mind if I handle it? Uh, go for it. Okay, I'll so, just oh, put up. I'll uh, just you know put up a tendril pseudopod. You know, lift it up, kind of yeah. examine it. Yeah, the the uh, weapon is pretty much exactly you know how you know how that technology often appears. Um, it's got a ramrod attached. Uh, it has, uh, you know, the powder on the horn has black powder um, or whatever the local equivalent would be. And it has a uh, round shaped uh, bullets. And, and you uh, said this was a pistol style? Yes. Yep. Black powder pistol. Yep. It, it looks very similar to, you know, like, like the weapons from ancient earth. But then, of course, weapons like this appear on many worlds. Uh, it's Earth is not unique in that regard. Uh, this one is single shot. Just so it holds a single bullet, but the quality is very, very high. Like it's a very yeah. well-made weapon. Your craftsman's really done a good job with this. I, the people here definitely have some great skills, and they definitely appreciated some of the uh, trades that me and my f crew and various other crews have uh, done. Well, I think we should. I think we should hold on to that, Benny. We don't want Cat getting any ideas. You know, it's his. Oh, guy. Well, now that you say that, <laughs> yeah, but he's our prisoner. <laughs> um, you, you say that uh, that may no, that may that, very uh, Jay Puglia, that may very well be, but right now, uh, we're all sort of in the same boat together. Well, oh, I, I know, guess I we'll give him a little, a little bit more he's leeway. Already, he's already had plenty of opportunity to to get rid of us and make his escape on his own, and he didn't take those opportunities. And all and, right, Cat, you help us through this. You help us save our people. Uh, we'll be we'll be on good terms. But you got to help us, and don't get any bright ideas. And, and I'd like to point out that for a prisoner, he's remarkably well armed. Um, <laughs> has, has has his own pistol at his hip. <laughs> and 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 is packing a couple of planetary union pistols in his pockets that you guys already know he has. So, well, I got two pistols. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but Barry's telling you guys to trust the space pirate. And, All and right. I, in this predicament, I think we should, Benny. What do you think? Yeah, I, if these townspeople are, uh, you know, genuinely appreciative of. Uh, decent trades that'll make things a lot easier on us to get our shuttle repaired. All right, Catman, let's let let's do this. Let's get our people. What's right. next? Well, so, so as soon as we get something that we can travel much faster than walking, uh we should definitely go. So what I'll do, Woody, is I'll head over and get a uh, medical kit or something yeah. that basically would be enough of um, 
some basic yeah. medical supplies. Um, yeah, I realized I didn't say that, but the, the there would be a, a medical kit in the uh, in in the shuttle as well. Mm. Yeah. So we're good. Maybe we're we we're ready to some, some stuff from the from the Redenbacher that might be you know if the if sick bay wasn't completely destroyed, you know maybe we can scrounge up some medical materials from there. Well, the uh, ship that crashed is not the Redenbacher. It's a larger, oh. heavy cruiser, and there is there is a good chance that some portion of the ship is intact. Um, even though it crashed and was on fire, it doesn't mean that everything is destroyed. Um, the The bigger the ship, the more likely sections of it could have survived the, the crash. Um, as you pointed out last episode, they also have uh, you know force fields that reinforce portions of the hull. Some of those could have uh, you know hel helped it uh, survive the yep. landing. So. There's a number of scenarios, and there would inevitably be, be other survivors landing on the planet in escape pods as well. Um, Woody. Yes, sir. Now, with the uh, place that I have, do I have a kind of like a ham radio or something that would be a basic level of communication? You do have, uh, you, you, you would de definitely have a communications device that would be suitable to like contact the other pirates, but it also. I'm sure you'd also be aware that turning it on would just attract the attention of the Kalon as well. Um, okay. So it y you certainly could send a message. Well, uh, it would be risky. Actually, I'm surprised that don't have something like a ham radio or something like that, because I would kind of figure with uh, piracy, you probably would want to do something that's internal for like a couple of reasons. One, you don't want the locals to get the uh, their hands on the technology that's higher level. And sure. two, when the union or other pirate groups or whatnot are around you wouldn't want to broadcast anyways correct and and i am assuming that you know the the communication system you have here is probably well hidden it looks like something else so um can you guys give me just a quick second i um had a sneezing fit before the show started uh give me just a moment here all right go have a sneezing fit <laughs> i'm wondering if we can use the uh and actually uh, while he's doing that uh the audience if you have any suggestions of how we can communicate or um, uh, at all with the survivors that are hopefully survivors that are 100 miles away on that mountain, uh, feel free to put it uh, into the chat. Sorry, sneezing also, always disturbs my sinuses, and I don't necessarily want to put on a show on screen. Yeah, that, that's true. Can we use our scanners to, to emit some sort of uh, message uh, over to hopefully some survivors in, in the wreckage? Maybe even kind of uh, like Jerry. an SOS. Yeah, like even Jerry were get to uh, to emit some sort of uh, Morse code. Uh, it it would be possible. It's just it the the trick, of course, is uh, making sure that whatever you're doing would not be just broadcasting to anyone that's hunting for survivors. And and to to address more uh, completely, Alex's uh, where you were going with this, Alex. So in relation to this planet, it's it's a place the pirates have been using to land and um, you know conduct trade and also shore leave, right? And so part of, <laughs> yeah, smoke signals, nice. Uh, so part of how that works is even though like the the cultural contamination has basically occurred here, um, one of kind of the unwritten rules is um, as long as the pirates don't uh, recklessly introduce new technologies, it, you know, some of the bigger governments tend to look the other way on certain things. So the people are advancing faster than they would have normally because the pirates do come here and visit. But, uh, you know, if, if as long as you guys don't introduce um, super advanced technology to the planet, uh, it's, it's less likely that people are going to aggressively hunt you down here. Understood. So, yeah. So that, that would be the deal. Like, uh, you, you know, the pirate crews come here for shore leave. They do some trade, but they don't necessarily hook the people up with, like, advanced radios and guns. Okay. Yeah. But of course, you know they they they're advancing. They're, they're you know, having an example to follow. Definitely gives them a lot of ideas they would not have had as 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 normally as quickly on their own. Is there a way to do a broadcast with the systems that we have that would either be less than planetary uh, communication, like just X amount of miles away? Absolutely. To basically do a ping or some sort of broadcast that just fades out yeah. after a certain amount of distance. Uh, yeah, it, it totally could. In fact, uh, there, there's a phenomenon where I believe where you bounce radio signals off the atmosphere 
for longer range uh, communication, which doesn't necessarily yes. put yeah. it out into in space. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I just need to know if you guys have the skills to pull out tricks like that. The skills. Let's see what I have. <clears throat> mm. uh, does anyone have bullshit space magic? <laughs> <laughs> Or, it's actually uh, not bullshit. That's that's how ham radio operators can can bounce signals literally across the planet. So it's, the question it's a real is, thing. Chaz, for your character, do you have something like that that's able to? Well, well um, I'm, your... I'm I'm mainly looking for uh, a a skill that would justify it, like a sensor operator skill or communications or something that would uh, justify having that much in depth knowledge of the communication system. Oh, dumb me when we're talking about the gun, and I'm like, that's too old school. I have OG equipment skills. Is that what you mm. wrote down? Yeah, OG equipment nice. skills. So so, so in that particular case, you might actually be uh, able to handle a black powder pistol proficiently. Yeah, I, I'm very good at it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jetpacks, no. I don't. Uh, racing vehicles, I don't think anything here can be considered uh, a vehicle for racing. It depends. Um but uh, um, you you do have a jetpack, which is you'd be more than capable of flying that. Oh, and also, by the way, uh, I know you guys popped off a lot of ammunition and we didn't keep track of that. You guys will be able to recharge your weapons in the ship. So we can uh, reset your weapons to full power if you like. And then, uh, Yeah, let's do that. And then please keep track of it at this point. <laughs> Let me get my trusty pencil or pen. So do, do, do we have any communication skills that would be, uh, or skills that we could like justify being able to mess with the, with the comm system and, and the level that Alex is talking about? I think Benny might be, might have some, Benny's more into uh Well, I have general engineering. Okay. As a and profession. Then, and then J JP has jury rig as well. Yeah. So, okay. Well then what, what it would be then is it would be a higher DC that you guys would have to hit than would normally be the case. And so, but because uh, JP has the jury rig skill, um, we'll, we'll, we'll give you guys a plus two um, with, with the teamwork attempt. Okay. Okay. So, so, so the question is basically what, um, what message are you guys trying to send? Um, a, a live coming for you. Okay. Help if you ping it, if you, yeah, help us on the way. If you ping it, it sounds like da, 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 da. That's the code. Uh, hello, PJ. He 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 chimed in. We 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 just got a visit from Orville Nation. Orville Nation, what's going on? Yeah. Hope you're doing good, PJ. Yeah, get 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 well soon, buddy. <laughs> so, alrighty. Um, okay then. Uh, so if you guys are gonna go out and do that work, it'll take you. So if you're not communication specialists, you probably would take about an hour to set something up um, and uh, uh, and also configure it to minimize your risk uh, of being detected. Um, here is another question for you. Um, so the ship has a lot, still has a full power supply. Um, do you, what do you want to do about concealing it? Uh, you you know, the, the, uh, the cloaking device will work adequately to, to make this, to turn the ship invisible. And it could probably stay like that for for weeks uh, before the power supply um, hit a point where it was compromised. Do you want to cloak the ship for the time being? I think it would be best to cloak the ship. Yeah, yeah. And that way it'll stay safe. It won't influence anybody. Yeah. And uh, it'll be there for us. Yeah. Um. Should we uh, actually should we see about like uh, putting it, covering it up, or getting it? Uh, Someplace on property, like one of the barns. Back to the future style. Yeah. Right. Mm. Yeah. Let's hide the DeLorean. Well, the only hang up with hiding in a barn is it is a large vessel, and uh, it would fill the entire barn, and the barns are needed uh, for the for 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 the work occurring here. Somebody so, would stumble upon it. Yeah. Uh, so you, so that's but the the reason like this space. Like you do have a space that's set aside specifically for ships to land, um, where they're not allowed to build or do anything with that with that with that land. So it's like you are in the ship is parked where it's supposed to be. Um, okay, it's more of a, a concern of like, are you concerned about someone else finding it? Well, that's the biggest thing until it's like I know that um, 
none of the crew that I'm a part of or any other crew, you know, comes this way, it's a potential concern. Well, given that's a war zone, um, the, it does reduce the likelihood that more pirates are going to show up. It doesn't make it impossible, but it does does reduce the likelihood. Well, I mean, if it'll if it'll run for weeks, no problem. Hopefully, we won't be here for weeks, so we'll be able to get back to it in time. Okay. Well, it's certainly a, a, an acceptable strategy for now. So, all right. So, okay. So here, here's what we need. Um, so who wants to roll for the skill check specifically to configure the communication system? Would it be I want to roll something. Let me roll. <laughs> All right. What do I need so, to roll? Uh, okay. Uh, D, D20 uh, plus a um, uh, plus a D4. What's what's your agility bonus, JP? Uh, agility bonus is... Uh, oh, saving throws is two. Right. But you mean... Uh, my actual agility is uh, 15 so plus it's a, 2. It's okay, a plus so 2 bonus. You, so then you're going to roll with a plus 4 bonus since the two of you are working together. Okay, it's the 4 of the triangle? Yes, it is. It's, it is. It is the one that kills your feet in the dark. <laughs> okay, so I just need a, I need a 20 and uh, the triangle. Oh, shit. <laughs> Hold on. And, and and a little pyramid. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> uh, yes. I'm dying, J guys. JP is okay. Finally, pop that cherry. Okay. <laughs> so just these two die, and I'm good. All right. All right. Here we go. Oh, Avis, let me get it. Ooh, I like this bowl I got. All right. Well, it's definitely quieter. Yeah. Yeah, the other one was metal. Um. Yeah. So I guess uh, uh, nine. A nine with plus four, 13. All right. Well, that's what you got. Um, you are... Okay, so you guys send the signal, and the uh, you, you, you send the alert, and um, how long do you want to leave it on? Um, just a week, I would think. What do you think, Benny? Cat. <laughs> so don't trust I was thinking maybe an hour at most. Well, how long will it take us to get 100 miles away? Well, you guys aren't necessarily going to be out of here. Most likely within the hour, you'll still be here. I was um, need we need to cover while we work on it. Yeah. Like, we'll see. You're, 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 you're sending a signal out to let people know that there are other survivors. And right, so, let's do uh, just yeah. in case. Let's just do two hours and thirty-eight minutes. Well, and how far out are you actually going to be doing? Well, uh, it would be no trouble for it to reach the wreckage of the ship. The, the big question is: Do you want to do any further out? Because there's probably going to be more wreckage because that uh, firefight that was going up there definitely blew through a lot of ships. Okay, Barry chimed in. Barry says an hour max, so we got to go with the audience on this one. Yeah, the the audience is one of the players, so. <laughs> and so some of these players may 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 have hard earned experience. <laughs> um, I mean, if if there's any possibility that this thing could accidentally act like a beacon, we want to leave it on for as short a time as possible. True, that makes okay. sense. You know, once we've gotten to the other us. ship, once we've gotten to the other ship, then maybe we can jury rig something on the other ship to look for any other down ships in the area. Okay. You know, and go kind of go. I mean, there's only so fast we can go. You know, so we'll just do take one step at a time. Well, I like that advice. You're a, you're an amazing engineer, Benny. So I'm going to go with what you say on this. All right. So. You guys are leaving it on for an hour, and then, um, uh, you know, there's uh, the the groundskeeper also shows up um, with with a cart. Um, they're basically making an excuse to head into town, so they've got a bunch of um, supplies that they need to tr transport to to the main town. And so the, the wagon is uh, full of uh, barrels and crates and other odds and ends. Um, and then uh, he's, of course, uh, you know, prepared to drive it. And then, um, and you guys, uh, 
uh, no, he, he also uh, brings you guys uh, like a, a plate of food, um, or I guess more of a basket, you know, with with, with some some food to see if you guys need anything to eat. There's some local fruits, uh, dried meats, and uh, some uh, roots and things that are edible. And then um, he comes up to you and says, uh, uh, "Sir, um, your friend here does he eat?" And he points to the to 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 the pile of slime on the ground. Oh, I, Barry here, he definitely eats. The other one doesn't. So it's no worry. That's okay. Alien food usually sucks. <laughs> um, so, Chaz, your character would just simply assimilate it into his body past the membrane yeah. and it would dissolve. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll pluck something red out of the basket and just sort of... Yeah. Yeah, the, um, the groundskeeper is a little disturbed by that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but Benny, we we when we first met, we shook hands. You were tasting me. <laughs> well, not intentionally. But are, are you saying that Yafit was eating Claire? He <laughs> literally did that. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't so, know, we're not going to tell you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah. Um. So it, it becomes quite apparent that this uh, um, uh, Carcaris uh, is not, <laughs> thanks, Mike, uh, is not particularly, dis he may find Benny unusual, but he doesn't seem to be particularly bothered with the concept of uh, aliens and uh, other sentient races. Like, you guys probably don't have to worry about being dissected by local scientists to understand what makes you tick. Oh, good. Yeah. I that hasn't happened for years. <laughs> <laughs> so... As soon as you guys are ready to go and you sh sh shut down the beacon, uh, he directs everybody uh, up into the wagon, and then, um, and then, and then the uh, the the beast that they are um, uh, carrying it with or pulling it with it looks similar to a horse, but it's covered in scales and has clawed feet. Oh goodness, like a dragon! Uh, yeah, yeah, that's one way of putting it. <laughs> Can it fly? No, it just uh, digs in and and uh, he just hits the reins and it just carries the. The, the 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 wagon forward um who All is right. riding next to him on top and who's going to be in the back uh well since i'm a pilot and he's piloting these this horse yeah. i'm going to sit up front that's a time to learn yeah time to learn how to how to how to uh, pilot one of these things okay yeah he's certainly happy to uh, uh have a conversation with you about that um interestingly i'll, enough, I'll just i'll just sit in the back and and keep an eye out uh where we came from see okay. if anybody follows us um, and and I want to point out, by the way, uh, as I'm sure it would have been, um, uh, uh, we should have mentioned this sooner. Uh, he does appear to have a uh, capable of understanding of the English language, uh, a being able to speak with, uh, with with Cheshire, no problem. This animal, this beast? No, 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 no. Yes. No, you 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 do not have Valentine singing horse. You have. Uh, we're oh. talking about the groundskeeper. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you, you guys ever seen that movie? Uh, uh, what the, I hate when I do this. Um, Top Secret? With Val yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> With the horse was singing and coughing. Uh, okay, so, um, oh, uh, how you hug the scaled donkey. Nice. Uh, all right, so the, um, the, uh, the beast uh, begins uh, galloping and uh, pulling uh, the wagon forward, and you guys get get a, another look at the uh, the area as you're leaving. So, you guys are on a large uh, plantation uh, where they're picking berries, uh, not unlike grapes. And this is a uh, it, it's uh, a, a a winery, and um, you know the, the the hillside and the countryside is uh, very picturesque. And um, as you uh, over the next uh, twenty minutes or so um, of travel. You guys end up approaching a seaside town, and uh, it looks very similar to many uh, communities of a similar type that you would expect on Earth and, and other worlds. And um, as you uh, ap approach the town, um, yes, a caliph, nice. Uh, yeah, as, as you approach the town, uh, you, you you are coming up on a on, a, on an archway uh, for um, for uh, to to enter, and there are. Uh, a pair of uh, armored men that look not unlike uh, Roman soldiers. Oh my goodness! That's right. We're doing space Romans. So, anyways, 
Space um, Romans. Space Romans, yes. Uh, yes, they are standing there with spears. Uh, they have their uh, their breastplate. And um, uh, as you guys approach, uh, they uh, step forward and cross spears to get the, uh, the, the cart to stop. I'll uh, step on out. All right. Um, so and Alex in in the yes. native language. Yes. Uh, yeah. So they they uh, they speak to Cheshire in a language you guys don't understand. But um, uh, Cheshire, they uh, they, they say um, uh, Lord Cheshire was a question. Um, are you Lord Cheshire? Yes. The uh, mayor has requested that we. Uh, detain you and conduct you to speak with him uh, when you reach town. Understood. Um, if uh, if you will accompany us, please. Goes. These two need to uh, accompany me also. That is fine. Uh, as long as you can. As I point at Barry and uh, Jay Puglio. Okay. Yeah. Cool, we're, we're we're his uh, therapy friends. <laughs> yeah. My emotional support humanoids, <laughs> and yeah. Barry, his 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 emotional support slime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 according to Tipsy Flipper, these guys are named Claudius and Bill. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I was going to call him Roman and Plasky. Uh, what's it, Roman Plasky? <laughs> I was yeah. thinking of henchmen 21 and 24. Uh, so anyways, um, all right. Uh, so you're, uh, the, got all these names to keep track of. Carcaris says, uh, uh, sir, um, I will go conduct business in town. And shall I meet you at the, at the, the mayor's estate? I very much very well. so. Okay. So he, uh, um, he lets you guys off the off the cart, and then uh, hits the reins and continues on. And you guys are led through through the town um, by by the two. Uh, what should we call them centurions? We guess we'll call them legionnaires, and they um, are guards. And so, yeah, you, you guys are. Uh, yes, yeah, you, you guys are, are t taken through the town, and uh, you see all kinds of uh, homes and local businesses, and a lot of cottage industry. The place is quite busy. And uh, Ooh, yes, frozen yogurt. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Alex. It looks like you're oh, just something. laughing at okay. GPs. Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and and uh, eventually you guys reach a a large house at the center of town, which looks like it uh, doubles duty as as a as a town hall as well as uh, somewhere where someone lives. And you guys are are brought in, and uh, when 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 you enter the building, the uh, the the two legionnaires uh, depart. And you guys are met by a man in a very nice outfit. Um, kind of wish I had good visual aids for this, but he's dressed in a uh, uh, he's dressed in a toga, and uh, uh, but with like more adornment than you would normally see in like you know in, in Roman films. And um, and he walks up to you, and in the uh, local language, as opposed to you know command of uh, English. Um, and he he says, uh, "Oh, Alex, by the way, you do have a translator. You could." do that so the rest of the party can talk as well yeah i know okay all right so yeah so he walks up and, and he extends his hand and says uh lord cheshire welcome um for my uh companions here we need to uh talk in the uh language of the spacers uh, uh of course of course do what you need to do i right, thank you all right, and so and switch to English. Okay, so uh, Alex or Spanglish is uh, or whatever. Yeah, so Alex <laughs> uh, uh, or Cheshire's com scanner unit that he has will automatically make the translations work. Um, so it, it, imagine a badly dubbed foreign film, <laughs> and <laughs> that's what you guys will see. Wow, well, kill my father. Yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> I've always wanted to see that in one of these uh -huh. shows. Yeah, with, well, with the, the Universal the, Translators. The way I, I think that'd be a great season four, like yeah. intro of like, you know, character comes up, word, yeah. Well, I <laughs> way, way I think the technology would probably work is that the there would be like a one or two second delay. The translator would receive the communication, translate it, and then there would be like a counter wave that would kind of go out, that would cancel out the sound, 
of the person speaking and then it would speak for you and you would hear what the translated version would be and so um it's one of those things where you guys couldn't talk over each other so so much but i think it would work just fine uh but you wouldn't see it matching the lips like it does on mm -hmm. you know on star trek on yeah uh, the only way that would work is if you were over a monitor like a the big view screen and it was you know digitally editing the image to match so yeah lips look yeah Spang it also works if you just believe Yes. Uh, I, I, I think the only way it would actually be perfect is if you had a brain implant or something that would um, be uh, making Make your mind speak. see it. Yeah. So anyways, it says, uh, yes. Um, uh, so Lord Cheshire, uh, I have some business I wish to discuss with you uh, pertaining to our the previous arrangement that I had with uh, with your crew. Um, if you don't mind, I would love hope we could speak in my office. Um, it's not necessarily for public consumption i understand and and we do have a uh, bit of a uh, time crunch with uh what just happened with that yes vessel yes. that uh crash landed that wasn't your ship was it nay okay oh, but uh have to go check it out actually we need to get a vehicle that would be able to get us up there um uh, pretty fast well i don't know how how that would happen but uh come with me um we we need to speak um all right and uh <clears throat> so um and and of course in the in the town hall there are people that are you know occasionally doing you know local business and work so he takes you guys into a into a more of a private room with uh, nice couches and uh, uh offers you guys each a, a place to sit uh uh benny obviously slithers you know, and up up onto the couch with kind of a slurping sound, and um, and he says, uh, "So, uh, Lord Cheshire, uh, as you may recall, um, certain arrangements were made to uh, ensure the uh, that your crew could come here, uh, engage in their frivolities, and um, we assured you uh, a, a space to uh, you know to to live." You have, um, you know, connections in the community for your investment in in, in our, um, our our wineries, which we truly appreciate. And we've, of course, you know, ensured that certain uh, indiscretions amongst your other crew were were dealt with uh, uh, properly. And and of course, in return for this, you've you've gotten a certain degree of uh, diplomatic immunity when you come here. But we do need some help uh, for with something uh, more urgent, along the lines of ensuring the continued relationship that we enjoy such as so um as you may recall uh part uh, and of course um we have uh there are certain tariffs that are uh, we have to pay on the export of our wine to the city as a way of ensuring that there's not a uh, there, 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 there's fair price competition of course and i have been um engaged in certain extrajudicial trade um of of the, some of these these exports to uh, acquire more funding to support the community. And right now uh, we have a problem where the Centurion who was uh, part of that to, shall we say, looking the other way, has currently been transferred away uh, to participate in, 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 in the war effort. And the individual who's come in to take his place is not as inclined to play ball, if you know what I mean. Aye. I see. I was somebody hoping... that's a real stickler for rules and regulations. Actually, quite the opposite. He oh. thinks that he should have a bigger piece of the pie, or cut me out altogether. I believe he has designs on taking over the smuggling operation completely, and he is not the type who is going to uh, in reinvest some of this money in the community. I hate it when people do that. Um, as I, I recall, individuals you... that. Yeah, well, as, as as I recall, you were very strict on the point that we had to make sure there was a public library, and I have kept good on that promise. All right, good. All right, give me the details of uh, everything that needs to be done. I'm going to help these individuals with the uh, mountain situation, and as soon as that's done, I will take care of this. I was really hoping we could take care of it a little bit sooner. Um, I 
could probably make uh, arrangements for you to have faster transportation if you can get this done now because he's complicating my position here that being the case then yes oh, we will be I, dealing with this first i mean uh given how long it would take you to make the trip you intend it um it would definitely, I think, would be a much better to get this out of the way quickly. And I, I said I can certainly arrange something quite quick. All right, then. Of course. We will uh, take care of this. Thank you. Appreciate it. <clears throat> and so. uh, hand him over a pouch. Mm -hmm. And what's in the pouch, Alex? Uh, some of the local currency or something of that value. Okay, so now we're going to have to address how much money you have. So these, these guys are going to be completely broke. Um, <clears throat> What's money? Exactly. So you will have a certain amount of money, right? So um, that would have been uh, socked away in, in, uh, in, in, in your house for a rainy day. So, Alex, we're going to have you roll um, roll 46 for me. Or D6. A four. A four. A one. Okay. And a three. So Okay, so you are going to have... Uh, that's, 12, that's 12, right? Um, yeah. Yes. So you're going to have 1,200 gold. That okay. will have to be uh, shared between the whole party. Uh, this uh, The local economy runs on uh, locally minted gold coins. <clears throat> so that'll be what the what, what your group has to work with to start out. <clears throat> so how much are you going to give uh, get, give the guy? Um, I'm presuming that like most kind of fantasy ages and whatnot, um, somebody like him, a hundred gold would probably be it would quite be valuable. Healthy amount of money, yeah. Yeah. So a hundred. Okay. Done. Um, <laughs> store the and then to, penny, he would be so blank. <laughs> and then to the two of you, I'll hand uh, 50 gold and say of, while we're in town here, we might need some various resources and whatnot, so here we go. Oh, um, you might not be familiar with this. This is called gold. It's things that uh, you can do to basically give trade and various things that you might want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know how gold is. This is things with you take the wrapper off and there's chocolate inside. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, indeed. You should yeah. give that a try. Uh, I will. Give me some of that gold. <laughs> and here's uh, 50 for you. Oh, and wow. then I look it down at Barry and go, you know what? I think uh, since you're the smarter one, here's a hundred. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Alex, it's Benny. Gee, thanks. Benny. Oh. Yeah. All All right. Right. I'm on a diet, so I'll just have one of them. Okay. Just just kind of flatten out a little bit, and as he, as he drops it down, I'll just sort of roll up around it. And... <laughs> All right. So, uh, the Centurion uh, is a guy named Marcus Tark, spelled with a K. And they, um, according to the uh, the mayor, um, he is frequently found at the uh, the guard post, uh, the main command center, where the um, the 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 legionnaires uh, that are posted here function um, kind of like a, as a city watch slash uh, police force. And so they, uh, you know, essentially just keep order, patrol the area, you know, watch city gates, that sort of thing. Um, and then, uh, but he may also be, uh, if he's not there, then he could be at any number of other locations. Uh, he might be found at, at one of the local taverns. He could also be out on patrol with the men. Um, so, uh, and, and the mayor was not specific on what he needs to be done to take care of this guy. He just wants the guy to quit being a problem. Um, but of course, uh, it's up to you guys uh, how to interpret that and to how permanent a solution you're you're looking to execute. Let's send him on a wild goose chase. This guy wants power. Let's send him somewhere where he thinks he can get power, and that'll get rid of him, 
uh, quickly if he leaves now so we can get back on the road to save our people or find our people. Oh, uh, Pyrick Pax has just asked a question. He missed the intro. Um, <clears throat> well, the, the, the quick answer to your question, uh, for anybody that's arrived late, is that uh, the, the party um, had, had forced to land on this planet after escaping a space battle. And so it's actually not a medieval society. It's more Roman. But um, yeah, we're, we're, we're doing space Romans. But yeah, they are on their way to uh, um, track down survivors and recover technology uh, from, the, from a crashed uh, battleship. And unfortunately, you're just gonna have to deal with some local bullshit along the way. Yeah, we have to navigate this society without uh, exposing them to uh, to uh, advanced technologies and things like that, or, or at least not giving them the advanced technology. Yeah. So, and, and we can't go anywhere very fast because they don't have anything that goes fast, except for scaly horses that just go at horse speed. Horse speed's pretty good. I want to go could... quantum. <laughs> You want a quantum horse? Yeah, I'll take one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Strap that on the back of the cart. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, put a rocket thruster on the back and let her rip. Uh, all right, guys. So how do you guys want to approach this this problem? Because it, it, it will de definitely get you a fast transport. Um, can we just knock the guy out and lock him up somewhere? What do you guys think? I'd like to get this guy taken care of in at least five or ten minutes. <laughs> you know, uh, I have to definitely say you definitely are quite an interesting uh, union member. I don't want to kill the guy, but, you know, I've been knocked out here and there, and I'm fine, as you can see. Now, yeah. where are we again? Uh, you guys are in a town known as Midvale. And it's it, it it is a coastal community, so there's docks, and there was going to be some shipping. Um, the the lake you're on is is huge. It's like um, I wouldn't call it a Great Lake, but it's probably more like Lake Washington. So there would be some you know some boat travel, um, a lot of fishing. Where's um, Marcus at? Like exactly where where is he? Where did we stumble upon him? Well, you 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 were just given a couple of possible places to, to find him, but you may just have to ask around town. The mayor doesn't know his exact location right now. Oh, we don't have his exact location. Yeah. Uh, is there anybody uh, around us that we can ask? Uh, there absolutely are. Uh, there are a few people that that, that are, are working within the town hall, just going about you know their administrative duties, uh, and there are also people out in the community. Um, there's the you know local taverns. There's people working, um, and there are uh, uh, other other people in in the you know, like the, the city guard. Um, is is there that, um, barracks? Ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, JJ. No, oh, I was just going to say, let's go to a tavern and ask people, because that's kind of what people do in these situations. Yeah. Um, yeah, th there there is definitely a barracks area, uh, as well as like a guard post where it would be like the command center. Um, oh, Barry says that Jay Poole should seduce the guard. <laughs> I could. Yeah. I have that ability. Yeah. Pheromone him right in the face. Yes. Depends. <laughs> Depends but is it worth that. it? Does the guard have information? Um, well, uh, I I should point out in advance that I'm not inclined to role play the sexy scenes. You are more likely, if you're going to pull a stunt like that, you're just going to get your fade to black moment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can and, do that. And, and no, the pirate, no, these people are not finding. Um, the blue skin to be strange. Uh, they have had regular contact with space pirates. So it is not something that is so unusual. It's almost like a hub, like a big city. Yeah. But not a big city, but yeah. It's, it's got a lot like of people. A, yeah. It's, it's, uh, I would say it's a larger town. So, all right. Well, what, uh, what are you guys going to do first? Uh, well, the bar the barracks, like right where we're at, are the bar would we reach the barracks before we reach a tavern? Uh, it would probably be about 50 50. Like, you, you, you basically, like, I don't exactly, I'm not working with the full map of the town. We're just saying, yes, the town has certain reasonable things you, know, you can reasonably expect to be here. So, if you want to reach the barracks first, you do. If you want to reach a tavern first, you do. Well, if this Marcus guy is trying to basically throw a coup, he must have people that are loyal in some way or another, scouts or something. Uh, where we're at, correct, uh, and and there's obviously people that are loyal to the mayor. Otherwise, it would not have been local legionnaires that came to get you. So let's find the ugliest dude we can find because I'm sure he's been turned. He's a bad guy. 
and let's ask that guy. <laughs> That's true. It's always going to be an ugly guy. I, I just had this image of like tracking out somebody who looks like John Cleese, who's the village idiot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, all right. Well, um, I mean, there's plenty of people that you would consider ugly in town. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That'd be big be and ugly. Yeah. Preferably so, um, with a big greasy beard. Okay. So looking around the town, <laughs> um, you, you see um, a number of males and females of, of, of the species, um, which uh, uh, Cheshire will, if you guys ever ask, will indicate they're called the Endar. And you see some certain uh, trends. Uh, the males of the of the species um, seem to have, uh, I guess you could say plumage, but like their hair is much brighter colors. They're all like really bright blues, uh, greens, and yellows. And the females uh, tend to have more of a mottled hair color where it's like, uh, you know, a mix of the various earth tones, right? Seeming to indicate perhaps a history where uh, one, one member of the species had to lure predators away. And uh, so you, yeah, you find that the, the the attractive the women are not nearly as flashy in appearance as the men, and so there tends to be more ostentation in, in how, how how the men dress. Kind of like birds. That's kind of the idea. Yeah. Well, let's find the brightest bird there is. Uh, <laughs> the, the blues and greens and yellows. That's my hue as a as a retepsian. I understand okay. those those colors. All right. So is is it going to be a barracks or is it going to be a um, uh, a bar? That's up to the audience. Audience, do you want a tavern or do you want the barracks? Oh, Barry says the uh, barracks are across the street from the tavern. <laughs> ah, that's yeah, the, uh, e equally good. Either one. Yeah. So the audience, you tell us, you want tavern or do you want barracks? Either one will be lots of fun. Choose your own adventure. That's right. Turn to page 38. Okay, someone says to go to, to, go to the Tarvin. <laughs> Let's go to Tarvin, the Tarvin Tavern. Oh, uh, now we've got a, a barracks. Bar. Okay, oh, we've got, okay, we, we, it looks like the bar is getting more votes. All right, so the Tarvin it is. Uh, <laughs> Keep right. in mind, with the tavern being so close, there'll be a lot of soldiers there at the tavern. And, uh, yeah, it's like a cop bar. <laughs> yeah. Roman cop bar. Oh, tar yeah, the the yeah, the Tarvin Tavern. I love it. Uh, we're writing that one down. Um, <laughs> hey, that's a good one. Yeah. All right. The Tarvin Tavern. Ooh, what times are uh, happy hour? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know if they. Eh, that's a weird thought that, oh. that 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 a place like this would have would have a. Uh, <laughs> uh, Alexa, what space time is it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so, all right then. Uh, bar called the Dirty Space Monkey. <laughs> nice, Mike. Okay, so you guys uh, walk, walk walk into the local watering hole, and uh, we'll say time of day. We'll say like a little past noon. Um, the place it isn't isn't packed like it would be at night, but there are some people, you know, in in there um, either get, getting some food to eat or having a drink, um, and there are a few. Uh, uh, local legionnaires that, that, are, that are here as well we'll say three of them are at a table uh in in enjoying some ale and there's uh five other patrons of the place plus the uh the bartender who's behind the bar uh cleaning glasses and the like well as a uh union officer i am no stranger to day drinking uh let's go to that <laughs> table let's go to the table of soldiers and and uh kind of see what we can find out from them <laughs> walk over and knock over their drink <laughs> All right. Tell I'm going to go over to the bar and get some uh, drinks or right. order a round of drinks for all of us. Okay, good, good, good. And then head uh, to the table. So we'll 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 say uh two two gold each, Alex. All right. All right. Uh Barry is advising you to uh talk to the bartender instead of the Oh, soldiers. that's a good that's a good suggestion. Yeah. Do, do you want do you want to take that advice? <laughs> yeah, I say take that advice. That's exactly what they would do on the on on the show. And, and Barry Human uh, says that uh happy hour is all hours. <laughs> Play Don Jot Barry Human. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, um you uh you you 
uh, walk up to the bar, and the bartender um, has uh, yellow hair, and he's uh, you know cleaning a glass, and uh, says, uh, <clears throat> looking at you, says, uh, "Hey, uh, space pirate, we don't want any trouble here." Oh no, there's not going to be any problems. Just okay. need some uh, information. Well, he, he was actually directing that to J, J. Pulio. Uh, trouble? Yeah. Even though Trouble's my metal name, we're not bringing any trouble here. We just uh, want to hang out and uh, get to know some of these people. Maybe uh, maybe you can uh, let us know who we might want to talk to. Uh, I'm going to put a little pseudopod up above, up above the bar, like yeah. high level with the bartender. Don't start none. Won't be none. <laughs> we get, yeah the 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 um the bartender looks over the bar to see what it see, see you and says what the hell are you your worst nightmare <laughs> uh, i i'd say that's correct um Hey, and, Mark, and, what can you tell us about this uh, Marcus, I can't remember his last name. Uh, Tark. Marcus Tark. The he kind of ever come in? Yeah. Okay. He ever uh, come in here? You know anything about this about this guy? We, he, we owe him uh, some money. We're just trying to uh, pay him back. Oh. <laughs> I like that. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, okay. So, um, so he says. Uh, um, uh, okay. Well, Jay Pulley is doing that. Um, I need uh, uh, Be Benny and uh, Cheshire to give me perception checks, please. All right. Okay. Um, let's see here. What you guys got? So I got fourteen. I got, I got a thirteen. Fourteen, thirteen. Okay. Um, JP, do you know you're muted? No, I was just pretending. I was an extra in the background okay. while they did that. Oh yeah, so yeah, 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 the bartender. Yeah. All right. So um, the two of you happen to notice that when uh, Jay Pulio starts uh, making comments um, about uh, Marcus uh, Marcus Tark, uh, the soldiers at the table not far away immediately perk up and kind of pay attention to that. And uh, and the uh, the the bartender leans in and says, uh, um, "You might want to keep your voice down a bit when you're talking like that, stranger." Oh, yeah, I didn't want to cause any trouble. I'm just trying to find our friend. Well, you just uh, should just you know read the room is all. Um, and a, a, as he's uh, saying that, he uh, pours the drinks that uh, that Cheshire ordered and and hands it out to the three of you. Mm, that's a good drink. Yep. And uh, he is also uh, <laughs> um, when, when when he watches Benny uh, take in his drink, he's uh, looking at that with some interest. How does Benny drink alcohol? Well, I just you know kind of spread out a little bit, pour it over the top of my head, and just let it absorb into me. So if it's <laughs> colored, you'll actually sort of see it just sort of disappear. I think. I, I was wondering if you were going to like extend a pseudopod and absorb it like Mark and Mindy. Nah, I think this is going to get a little bit more fun. Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, um, one one of the legionnaires stands up, um, approaches the bar, and uh, taps you on the shoulder, Jay Pulio. Hey, what's going on, buddy? Uh, you uh, are lo looking for the centurion. Yeah, yeah, we're just trying to pay him back. Uh, what, uh, what, what, what do you owe him? Uh, well, we have a bunch of these chocolate coins here uh, that we owe him. <laughs> we're just trying to get it back to him. I see. Well, uh, I'd be happy to take it to him for you if you want to get give it to me. I'll I'll make sure he gets it. Yeah, sounds great. This is a very fortuitous uh, meeting. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, here, uh, just. Hand it over. I'll I'll make sure he gets it immediately. Uh, hey, uh, uh, why don't we go with you? 
to give it to him because you know we, we got to catch up with Marcus. Uh, he he's very busy, but I'd be happy to pass on any, any personal message you have. He he's an important guy. He can't be bothered with with us uh, unimportant things. Oh well, we're very important uh, people as well. We know that he would love to hear from us. We just want to we just want to give him what we owe him, and uh, and 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 then we'll be on our way. But we have to give it to him personally. I'm not sure that's how that works. Hmm. I think it. I think it might be time to persuade this gentleman. Okay. With my special Rotepsian pheromone skills. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm going to um, need all these dice for this one. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Did you take the um, uh, the advanced pheromonal control ability? It's kind of before I had some sort of pheromonist. What, what, well, you do. Uh, you would, basically, you're trying to knock yourself into heat immediately. Um, so, immediate heat. Yes, immediate heat. I don't so. see anything. All right. Well, I'm looking at it right now. So... Uh, all right, so here's here's the deal. Um, there's two ways that you can go about this. If you want to go into heat, I will allow this uh, right now. Um, so, uh, so I have I, a charming I, demeanor. Yes. So I, I had sent you the the the, the 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 full details on going into heat is in the PDF, right? So, um, so what 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 we're gonna do is since you didn't take the perk for going into heat immediately or dropping the pheromones, what we're gonna do is we're going to allow you to um, spend a luck die or a luck point if you want to go into heat immediately. Otherwise, we'll we'll use your um, your your charming demeanor racial ability. Um, uh, I want to uh, go into heat immediately, like an instant blast of liquid coming out of my face. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Hypothetically. Of course, of course. Okay, then. Oh, I the think it's point. literally. At that uh, point, we're we're, we're gonna never uh, know. Yeah, we're gonna have you uh, get very hot and bothered. Um, okay, Ooh. so. Uh, all right, so the way it's going to work is you just need to make sure to touch the guy, and then we'll see if he responds to your pheromones. Okay. And Does touch him. Uh, yes. Uh, you just basically reach out and touch the guy, and we'll, we'll give him a saving throw. Um, touch. Okay, so what is your endurance bonus, uh, JP? Endurance, my saving throw is two. No, well, I, I, I want to I know what, what, what your endurance bonus is. is uh, it, plus two. Okay. Four, 14 plus two. Okay, hold on. Uh, let me just write a note here. Uh, All right. <laughs> Mike says raincoats, please. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, you might need a hazard suit. Um, Galoshes. <laughs> uh, okay, so here is the deal. That's the sound it's going to make. Uh, okay, actually, wait. Let me. Um, let me see. Is there? Oh, okay. Well, I guess that's uh, that's unfortunate for him. Okay, he fumbled. Um, I fumbled. Yes, he fumbles, no. which means he is extra vulnerable. Um, okay, so you can see in his eyes that it worked. So what is it? Uh, okay, so you, um, knowing this, what do you tell him next? Because initially he was quite resistant and trying to shake you down. Okay, first I say... Uh... Oh, sorry. Let me get you a towel. Then I say, <laughs> okay, uh, you didn't, you didn't squirt immediately. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. <laughs> felt like it did. Uh, no, no, we, we, we haven't had a I thought you said hot and like, bothered. Well, you, you know, uh, anyways. Um, uh, hey, uh, uh, you were, you were just telling me where this Marcus is. Oh, oh, I'd love to take you personally. I hope that means you're going to lead us to where the guy is oh, of and not take me personally. <laughs> okay, so we're going to treat him like he's charmed, which means you're going to have a big bonus on any uh, attempts to persuade him. So, um, JP, actually, what I want you to do is I, I, I want you to give me a, a persuade check. Um, okay. And then you're going to be doing it with a D6 instead of a – wait, uh, are you proficient in persuade? Um, do do uh, do you, do you have uh, per persuasion as one of your skills listed? 
No, I have perception and pilot. Okay, Other then you keys. can. Okay, so then you 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 can make a persuasion check with with with, with a D four proficiency. Okay, let's go with the white one. All right. All right, here we go. And Avis, help me. One. Oh no! Jeez. Oh, so he says. Uh, okay, here we go. Um, he says, uh, but you know, uh, perhaps uh, um, there's somewhere else we could go first. Be, be, be before we get we go go see Marcus. We, there's no reason to be in a rush. Um, actually, uh, I would really love to see Marcus right now, but then after that, we can go to a a a, a special place. <laughs> How special are we talking about? As special as you want. JP, you're starting to make me regret this. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, this guy ain't going to get some special play, <laughs> but he doesn't need to know that. All right. All right. Um, okay. Uh, get give me, a, give me another persuasion check. All right. Here we go. Or. Okay. Um, he uh unfortunately uh you've managed to turn the gun a little bit too hard and um he's uh he's getting a little yeah he's getting a little handsy and he's not uh he's not backing down and then uh one of his friends gets stands up and he says uh like basically the amount of dude what's wrong and and there's a little bit of an exchange where he's getting acting completely out of character super freaking obsessed with you and his friend is is getting really disturbed by this behavior, and then the 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 other um, the other one gets up and says, "Yeah, I think you had too much to drink. Let's get you out of here." And they try to drag him away from you, and then uh, he resists, and they end up getting in a fist fight in the middle of the bar over you. Yeah, they do. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's nothing unusual to me. Yeah, these things happen. Yep, yep. <clears throat> um, so. Uh, are Cheshire or Benny going to intervene in this? So once the fist fight starts, yes. I'm going to use, um, what is it? Uh, sorry. One of my class abilities to basically command command them to stop. Okay. Um, and basically see. saying of like, you are soldiers, you need to... Uh, you need to stop. Issue orders. Yeah, issue okay. orders. Okay. Uh, okay. So then, um, let me uh, let me roll to see if the guy calms down. Um, okay. Uh, he. Um, okay. So they they you doing that manages to get um, get the guy to calm down, and he shakes his head, and he's like, "Oh my god, I don't know what came over yeah. me." And and then I say to him with that uh, same kind of directing orders of yeah, we need to talk to uh, Marcus right now. You are going to take us to him, and it will not go onto your permanent record about this uh, outrage. All Do right. it now, and I would appreciate it too. Okay. Oh no, it's um, going on your permanent record. <laughs> 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 All right. okay um so, so the two guys is like oh my god yeah let's just get yeah fine yeah you'll there's a um he's he was uh dealing with some business on the outskirts of town at at, at one of the warehouses um the uh what would be the name of of of, of, of a warehouse business Audience warehouse business ready go. Where the warehouse? <laughs> um, hey Mike, can you respond to Nikki, please? I can't right now. <laughs> um, see the Ratepsi and neck pinch. Wow, um, <laughs> that's great. Uh, yes, um, something got pinched. Yeah, no kidding. Someone's yeah, someone's <laughs> getting pinched. Um, well. <laughs> You know what? It is just called the warehouse. We're just going to move on from that. Uh, yes. So um, the 
it, it's basically going to be a shipping company where uh, freight is stored. Um, the warehouse, yeah, the Weir House. I love it. Okay, fine. That's good. <laughs> okay, so it is going to be a uh, a uh, shipping company uh, that basically packages freight to be picked up and transported um, to to you know either onto ships or onto um, uh, larger transport uh, to one of the cities. East Tavern, East East Tarvin Trading Company. Oh, that's even better. Um, yeah, you never been to ETTCW? It's a great business. Yeah, so um, and, uh, you guys are given a reasonably good set of directions about um, uh, where to go, and they just lead their friend out out of there, and he keeps shooting glances back at Jay Pulio. Tee <laughs> <laughs> That's um, my famous pickup line. Tee hee. Um, so, anyways, um, and then the the bartender is just kind of doing a face palm at this because he doesn't know what what the hell just happened. He don't want to know what just happened. No, <laughs> no, he doesn't. Um, okay, I need uh, uh, Benny and uh, Cheshire to give me intellect checks, please. Mm. <laughs> oh no, Chaz! Did you do what I think you did? Almost, almost. <laughs> okay, <laughs> somebody rolled a two. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right, Alex, what do you get? Twenty-three. Okay. Also so has I two in it. Yeah, I think that Cheshire has put together what happened here, and you know full well. Keep your hands off, Jay Pulio. I'm still well, I'm, I'm still pulling down. Don't touch him for any reason. On my non-cybernetic hand, I make sure my glove is really nicely on. So that yeah. way. Um, but I, I don't believe that you would have any particular experience with what would happen, you know, to uh to Benny. So you may or may not want to point you know, mention something to him. It's totally up to you. I, well, I mean, it's like, you know, this is a scientific uh, potential thing. So I'll keep yeah. it in my back pocket for the moment. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, also, I'll tell you, you can sing happy birthday while washing your hands all you want, and you will not <laughs> stop what's going to happen. <laughs> well, this this could be fun because uh, Alex has not watched a lot of Orville, so he may not know. <laughs> all right. Okay. So you guys uh, ha have a location. You have the East Tarvin Trading Company, and um, and uh, that is just on 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 the outskirts of town. So you guys could probably be there. It would you know quick twenty minute walk would probably get get you there just fine. Uh, a walk. You're you're assuming Benny's appendages. Well, he's gonna Benny slither. Gets, yeah, he could slither or roll. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And, All right, and, we, should, we should go check it out. Yeah, and at, at, as you're walking, you you notice that Cheshire is definitely keeping his distance from you now. Just come on over here. Wait, wait, oh, so no. far away, buddy. <laughs> Social distancing, yeah. making sure oh, that okay. things are quite uh, a good distance away. That's probably safe. It's it's hard to get blue out of space pirate clothes. Yeah. Tell yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, oh, the bleach. <laughs> okay, um, you guys uh, pass a couple people um, as as you're uh, walking through town. There is an unfortunate incident where um, uh, a man uh, bumps into uh, Jay Pulio, unfortunately, and uh, <laughs> <let's see. laughs> and you guys keep going, and he um, uh, immediately starts hitting on the nearest woman he can find. And, All right. Uh, He's and doing then, it. He's and hitting on that a, woman. And then you hear a slap, and an argument ensues, and you guys keep going. You um, brute! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, you guys reach the warehouse. Uh, it is not nearly as big as the ones we would we would you know, be familiar with, it's, but it is a very large uh, building of wood and uh, concrete construction. And um, it, it looks like it's not a very busy and active place. Uh, you know, there's a there, there's a large uh, set of like kind of almost barn style doors that, that you can use use to enter the building, and um, 
uh, there's not um, most of the like the windows. There's windows on the building. They're not particularly well lit because they don't have electric power, obviously. But it looks like it's just stuff is just stuck here for storage, as opposed to people working here on a regular basis. And then it you know would be held, and then you know people would show up to do work when when there's actually some work to do. Um, the uh, as you approach the building, there doesn't appear to be in, in any. Uh, particularly active right now. Um, none of the doors seem to be open, and there's no sign of of the person you're looking for. Well, how do we find this guy, you guys? Well, uh, he might be in the building. We got to get in there, Benny. You're kind of slithery. Can can you find a way in? I'll try. Alex, were, were you going to jump in and say something? Go up to the door and knock. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's super old school all right let's try that um hey uh, i like the roll for Knox. um hey uh there is an important question on screen uh jp oh there we go all right we got our scanners let's scan for life forms <laughs> you guys have your 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 super artifacts you can certainly use them uh someone also tells you to look for traps that's probably not bad advice um all right, so uh, you whip it out and uh, start scanning for life forms. And, That's something uh, to say to me. Yeah. Okay. So you are you are picking up a number of life forms. Uh, there are um, uh, you're picking up uh, five life forms uh, w within the structure, all clustered together. Super rats. Yeah. Super there's a rats. group of people. Yeah. There's a group of people in there, probably doing something nefarious. We should check it out. You absolutely could. Uh, so they are not very close to 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 the main um, large uh, uh, barn doors. Um, are there any and, windows or anything? Uh, there are, but the windows are a little higher up. Um, somebody would, would have to get a boost to look through a window. Um, looking around the building, there is also a back door, which is man-sized, and they are not near near the back door. Um, it, it it looks like whatever they're they're doing, it's like they're kind of standing together as if as if there's a conversation occurring, and that is. Um, Pretty much in the middle of the warehouse, uh, uh, away from any windows, and away from the doors. All right, so let's ask the audience. Audience, do you want us to go to the back door, Ratepsian style, or do you want us to uh, throw Benny through a window? <laughs> well, Barry has suggested Benny should slide under the door and loudly ask for Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's an option too. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine with that too. If if, if you guys are for it. Uh, the audience is a player. Yes. Um, oh, Michael says that Benny should poke an eye up, an eye stock up, up through the oh, window. That's a good one too. That's totally done in the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we'll leave it up. We'll we'll leave it up to Benny. Do you want to be throw, thrown through a window? Do you want an eye stretch? Do you? We have, we have a vote for the back door. Back door. Um, well, none, none of the doors are open. It's basically a front door, um, back door, but sliding under the doors would not be a problem for, for, for Benny at all. Okay. Let's slide through the back door. That way, when you get to the other side, there's not going to be any surprises. All right. Okay. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to be stuck with the nickname back door, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see about that. Well, well, then don't make a habit of going through the back door. Um, <laughs> So, all right. So you guys um, head to the back end, and Benny uh, oozes under the back door uh, quite easily. It it takes you, um, you know, better part of uh, probably takes you a couple rounds to do it, but you 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 it's not difficult. And once you're on the inside, you see the latch, and it's very easy to unlock the door from the other side, and and let the let the rest of them in. Oh my God! Okay. Mike says to put Benny into a pizza box. <laughs> <laughs> Get you some PB, PBB. Yeah, pizza box like, hey. um, all right. So, uh, yeah, you guys ha have, have access. And uh, once you're in, you can definitely hear uh, voices uh, talking in the distance. And it sounds a little bit heated. Right, I'm going to let's, let's get a little closer, you guys, see what we can hear. I mean, does it sound checks. like oh, does it sound like it's in the uh, native language? Uh, it does. Yes. So it's uh, so you might not want to leave the uh, the universal translator on. What? Yeah, what's that I hear in the distance? Um, okay, so uh, I need stealth checks out of everybody. 
Which which one which die do we roll for? That is a d20. Uh, if you're proficient, you get to add your proficiency die. Pro proficient in what? I just so so it, it a stealth stealth is one of your skills. Okay. Um, and if you're not proficient, it's just going to be using your agility bonus. Okay. Let me just roll this. Five. Okay. Eleven. All right. So with uh, with uh, with your agility bonus is plus three, or plus two. Uh, plus two. Okay, so that makes it seven. All right. Uh, what does Benny get? A uh, total of six. Okay. So, Alex, you you end up getting in uh, the indirect bonus. <laughs> so, uh, un unfortunately, as you guys are doing it, um, yeah. Uh, Mr. Brown Chicken Brown Cow over here ends up uh, accidentally knocking something off off a crate. Uh, a, a, a a crowbar ends up hitting the floor, and immediately these guys, uh, all the voices stop, and um, it goes eerily silent in in the room. You know what? At this moment, um, on the device that I have like the little communicator, I'm going to uh, play some sort of animal sound like a space cat or some sort of uh thing that basically like makes a a, a angry meow or like yeah exactly <laughs> like that okay <laughs> all right alex i need you to give me uh deceit please all right oh um this yeah, if you fuck up, it's gonna sound like a tiger. <laughs> All right, so yeah, they'd probably react to a tiger more than fourteen a on the d twenty plus four is eighteen plus the Perfect. two from the uh, uh, d four is twenty total. Okay, so Alex, you immediately with your quick reaction, whip out your your uh, your communicator um, and just flip through the menus and tap a button. And hope you get the right one real fast. And there is a uh, a cat like sound, um, like a screeching I'll, cat. It, hopefully, it's like two cats fighting each other. Yeah, yeah two two cats in heat. And then, um, hey, heat's uh, my job. Yeah, that that is true. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, there. Uh, so somebody says something. Uh, well, Alex here is just like must must be a cat or the you know the local animal. And then uh, someone gets told to go check it out. And uh, you guys hear footsteps of someone approaching. So make a hand gesture of like. Yeah. All right. You guys uh, take cover, I assume. This is. Uh, yeah. And uh, hide behind a crate. And you see one of the legionnaires approach. And he's got um, a uh, short sword in hand um, a a a a as he's walking over. And he's looking around. And I need you guys to give me uh, stealth checks again, please. D20. Yes, please. Yep. 18. Ch Chaz. 16. Do you have drop that one? That no. one. <laughs> um, well, it seems that Benny was a little slow to respond and uh, left a little uh, lo a little bit of himself behind as he went sneaking around a corner. And the, um, the, the Legionnaire sees that, gets all squinty, and starts approaching. So, Maybe well, I have, but I have, but I have control over it. Uh, sorry, what, what, what was that, Chaz? I said I, I took the anatomical control, so I have control over this little piece. Okay, that, that uh, broke off. All right. Um, let's see. So, yeah. but I also, I also have amazing voice. Yes. So I'm okay. going to do something similar to what Alex did, and okay. I'm going to have this little little piece of myself just sort of rise up with the biggest, loudest. Animal roar well, I, I, that I, I mean, can that I can summon. So 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 the way that you speak is by pulling in uh, air and like creating a cavity in yourself and expelling yeah, yeah. it to make air, which yeah. means that biggest roar is going to be a little squeak on the part of that. <laughs> well, I, I got to do well, anything I can do to to make it scary. Yeah, maybe maybe uh, like a maybe like a scream, like a bat screech or something. Right. Um, okay. So you're so you're perceiving through this piece of yourself. Um, yeah. 
okay. So, I got uh, an I got an idea. What's what's am your I idea? Cl- Am I am I close to Benny, where I can grab well, him? Well, what it is is you guys are kind of around the corner, Peace. and uh, he's approaching from the opposite corner. So, sorry, my neighbor's upstairs. Uh, yes. So, um, you so know, he, big Benny is near me, but little yes. Benny is not. Little Benny is not near you. That's correct. So, a little piece of Benny is on the on the so floor. I got I got backdoor <laughs> Benny, <laughs> and okay. the guard's got front door Benny. All right. So. so all right, but so I got has, a plan. If, if if I have a question, am I still infectious with my with my heat? Oh, you're going to be infectious for a while, because I can grab off a little snippet of Benny, infect him, throw it at the guard, infect the guard, who then goes back to his crew and is in love with all of them. Oh dear, <laughs> <laughs> that is impossible. And that'll distract all of them at once. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, but okay. I'll leave it. I'll leave it up to you guys. <laughs> okay. Well, I, first, I would have to touch Benny to do it. Okay. okay I well, first thing I, I need Benny to do is get give me a perform check for that. Get that little piece to expel some some noise. See, I'm doing uh, it, here, buddy. I'm scary. Uh, fourteen. 14. 14 okay. Total. So the guy walks up, sees that little piece of slime on the ground. Um, it expels a squeak noise. And, <laughs> and then, um, he just looks down at it and just looks confused. Just looks utterly confused um, by what by what what he sees and does not proceed any further. So I imagine you guys are around the corner with guns out just ready. And he's just and and you know, Jay Pooley is ready to yank a piece off, and he just kind of like pokes at it with his toe, and just just is kind of staring at it. Somebody yells, um, "Is you know, hey, is everything okay?" Which Alex understands that, and he says, "I I guess," and he just kind of looks at it and walks away. Squeaky snot on the ground. <laughs> yes, um, and and uh, so, so he says. The- so the so centurion has just walked away. Uh, a legionnaire, yes. And, oh, okay, and sorry. somebody's like, "Hey, he, when he when he walks away, I'm gonna I'm gonna recover that little piece of me." <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then he says, uh, "So yeah, so he walks. They walk back. It's like, so what? What was it? It's like, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, a little a little squeaky piece of snot's not gonna raise his attention too much to think that they're in trouble. So no, not not in this case, no. Um, so, uh, anyways, they continue with their conversation. Um, Alex, uh, you were able to sneak up a little closer so you can hear, and they are basically talking about, uh, the smuggling operation in, in, in town. And apparently this is the warehouse where the, uh, smuggled wine is transported through. And this guy is in the process of essentially, um, attempting to extort or strong arm, uh, the guy running the warehouse into um, basically working with him instead of the mayor. Do I have uh, visuals? Yes, you can absolutely see see the guy. That's that's not a problem. Um, there are are two legionnaires, and then and then the guy that runs the warehouse is there, and uh, somebody who's like a deputy was with him. Hmm. So the uh, the legionnaires are all armed. You. Uh, you, you can see them. Uh, they, they've all got swords on their side and black powder pistols. The um, the centurion, of course, is armed the same way, and uh, it's unclear if 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 the two people uh, that from the warehouse are armed. But they they are clearly at at, at, a, at a at a disadvantage in the conversation. And if we shoot the sheriff, make sure we do not shoot the deputy. <laughs> <laughs> Good advice. So what should we? What, what are we gonna do, Cat? So I'll go back to uh, the group, okay. find where they are, and relay what I just saw. Okay. Um, are you speaking out loud or trying to find a more discreet way to communicate the information? Uh, um, he- head back. Um, since this warehouse isn't too big, but it's big enough, f- find like one of the other ends where they're not at. Okay. 
and then relay. All right. All right. So you guys are being brought up to speed. So how are we gonna how are we gonna take these guys, Benny? We got to get them away from from. Well, how do we know who the the who Marcus is? How do we how do we know which one's Marcus? If any of them are Marcus, Marcus would probably be the one with the most uh, the most fancy plumage. He, he the one he, talking he, yeah, to has, the warehouse owner. He also has the most impressive helmet. Okay, we need we need to get Marcus on his own. We need to get him away from, or we just need to get all of them away from town. Well, you guys are we're on the outskirts. Um, like we're also in a warehouse. We can yeah. uh, knock them out and store them in the warehouse and just say we got rid of them. Well, being on the outskirts of town, you guys are, are in a location where uh, getting out into the countryside from here is extremely easy. There is, aren't going to be uh, a, a lot of obstacles, fewer fewer witnesses. Our, our, uh, our pistols, do they have a stun setting? They absolutely do. Yeah. Um, so the way the stun setting would work is it just immediately converts to non-lethal damage, and when they go down to zero, they're unconscious. Oh, so it's not like it's not like as soon as they get hit, they're stunned. You still have to you have to hit them multiple times. Yes, the, this is a role playing game. It's not a TV show. Uh, <laughs> there's a certain <laughs> amount of like expediency hey, that happens on TV. Yes, sir. The uh, sheriff. Did it look like he was? Um really did he look like he was on board or was he kind of like um like the warehouse guy kind of reluctant or no well well there is like the one you call the sheriff is is the main villain of this of this piece he's the the centurion and he he's the one attempting to muscle these guys okay yeah no he's clearly not the good guy here if we're able to disrupt the meeting in a way where they all think they're being uh found out or they're turning on each other. They can take care of each other. And we don't have to try to get into a fight because we got two blasters. And how many of them are there? Three blasters. And there's three five blasters. guys. Yeah, three blasters, five guys. But two of those guys are the ones who apparently work with, with the mayor, who you don't necessarily want. He's with to... us. Yeah, potentially. potentially. Um, it, it, I guess it depends how this meeting goes. Uh, Alex, according to the conversations going, the guy is, he doesn't, seem like he wants to be strong armed like this but the um this the centurion is making it very hard on him to to st stick with his guy like it's it's basically explaining to him how difficult life is going to get and how uh, it would be unfortunate if he reported these uh, smuggling events to the authorities and brought the law down on them so uh uh uh, uh chaz and alex what if we rush in there with our three blasters and there's three dudes that we know are bad guys. And we, we all shoot at the three dudes while saying all hail the mayor or whatever. So that the other two guys know <laughs> we're with the mayor and then they join us. Hopefully. That is a, that is a solid possibility. You guys want to do that? Um, all right. So, you guys have a weapon each, and I've got a couple of weapons on myself. So uh, I'll, I'll we want non-lethal weapons. Yes, uh, all three yeah, of the no, guns. Yeah, no, no, we're, we're going to stun. That's for sure. Stun. But yeah. um, the bigger question is: if we focus our attack all together on the quote-unquote sheriff of Rottingham here and <laughs> take him down. down. Yeah. Uh, his guards are probably the people with him would probably surrender. That's that's true. I like I like that plan. So if also, we all if one of them stuck. if one of them try to grab me, they're in for it because they're instantly gonna right. fall in love with me. So we're safe there. Have you taken your daily pills? <laughs> yeah, it's been four hours and nothing's uh, gone down. Man. So besides being a uh, coat that you could uh, do for Christmas, you should definitely get a doctor to check on that. Yeah. Uh, wait till it starts to hurt. Uh, <laughs> uh, don't okay. fall face first then. So no. uh, should we shoot? <laughs> should we shoot the uh, main guy? 
yeah i like that together. idea yeah so that and way it's uh, like we get a much more guaranteed yeah we get a guaranteed down or close to one if and uh the other two will probably fall you take the head the rest of the body will exactly will poop itself okay. so um I, I i i have one thing i have one thing i'd like to add to this plan yes um i think we could get them to come to us we could take we could take up strategic positions behind boxes and stuff and i could get them to come to us okay. because with my amazing voice ability i could imitate the mayor oh and i could i could now that i'm you know have myself all back together I can use full volume. I can imitate any voice, any sound. So I could make it sound like the mayor had come in and was calling out <coughs> uh, Marcus. Oh, and get them brilliant. to come to us and to walk in to walk into a trap. Do you do you have perform twice by any chance? Have you selected that skill more than once or not? No, no, but no. Well, I, I was asking because no, you no, would but, have, but uh, it does say I can do it whenever I do it. I I automatically get proficiency on a on my performance check. Yeah, I I I just wanted to see if if you um, happen to have qualified for the bonus. So, um, okay, no, no, no not yet. We're not. I didn't make a mistake. We're not third level yet, right? Nope, nope, not yet. Okay, then 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 no, I have not done that. No. Okay. And if that doesn't work, can we do the pizza box idea? Well, that's always <laughs> available, JP. You can... All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can we go down the yeah, pizza open the pizza now? box and I put up a tendril with a blast of ting. Yeah. yeah okay. We're at the pizza party and the mayor's invited. All right. So you you guys back off to uh okay, well, uh basically your flanking positions to catch it by surprise. Yeah. Um, essentially yeah. we want to make a kill, we wanna we want to surround a kill zone, but not actually kill. Kill box. Stun zone. Got it. Okay. Um and then uh all right, so um you guys do that, and then uh, let me just check one thing real quick. Um, do, 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 let's see, where is my notes? There we go. Um, okay. Okay, got it. All right. Um, so, uh, all right. So you guys have have your 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 kill zone, and then I just need a perform check to replicate the mayor's voice. Oh, um, I'd like to give him that synergy bonus. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, do you well? Do you, do you have perform? Uh, well, be, be, because you would actually yes, have I do. To, oh, you, you you have proficiency with that? Yep. Oh Jesus. Okay, then yes. Uh, very good. Then I guess uh, looks like you get a plus three to your skill check there, Chaz. Holy crap! Okay. So he he basically. Uh, uh, so the way it would work is is he'd have to have you check the voice out, and then he would give you a couple of voice coaching suggestions. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, Apparently, this guy's treaded the boards a few times, or it's perhaps a good improv. You don't know, but he apparently knows his way around uh, around a good impression. <laughs> okay, with the You're, correct mold, come on, baby, come on, baby, come on, baby. Too. Yeah. Ooh, what do we got here? Ten, eleven, plus two, thirteen plus so sixteen. Sixteen. Okay, yep. you uh, you belt it out. This big, wide, flappy lips, and it sounds just like the mayor. <laughs> and what do you say? Marcus, show yourself. I'm sick and tired of your nonsense. You're not going to strong arm me. I run right. this place, not you. Okay, so here's what I need you to do. Give me an intellect check. Uh, give me, oh, an intellect check? <laughs> yeah, because uh, you're basically having to repeat what Alex told you to say. Because you don't speak the language. Oh, uh, cheese is old and moldy. <laughs> what'd you what'd you get? A thirteen. Okay. Uh, Barry says, "What the hell is going on here?" Yes, it, it's called a plan, Barry. Um, so, <laughs> okay. So, so the uh, all right. So you you belted out it. The voice is flawless. The translation maybe not so much. Um, and then uh, what happens is, is the uh, um, the the everybody looks up, points in the direction, and then the um, and then uh, the <laughs> centurion draws his gun and says, "We're not alone. Come with me." And they all start approaching with uh, with with their black powder pistols drawn. So is that just the three of them? Yes. 
and then the two guys from the warehouse stand back and um perfect uh you you guys aren't going to have the best view of what they're doing uh, because it's primarily going to be focused because like, you were setting up for your trap. So they 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 start to approach. They are rolling their perception checks, and um, they immediately stop. Uh, uh, two, two of them stop. Uh, well, the Saturian stops. So does one of his uh, one of his guys, and um, and and then they of course grab the get you know get, grab the other guy to get him to stop. And then, and then the centurion does this, and one of the guys goes and runs around the stacks. Mm. So they may have realized that there's a trap. Roll for initiative. Do I roll for initiative? Yeah, I'll, all yeah. three of you guys ro roll roll for initiative. I have no initiative. I got a <laughs> four. <laughs> You got a four. Uh, you still get your agility bonus, though. Oh, so that, plus that, two. That makes it a six. All <laughs> right. Uh, Chaz? Seven. Seven. Okay. And Alex? 16 plus four, so 20. Nice. Okay. So give me just a quick second. I am going to stage the battle. Uh, give me a minute here. Uh, you guys ready while for you're this doing battle? that, while you're doing that, I must jaloja, so I will return shortly. All right. You don't have a pea corner in the room? I finally get to use these things. <laughs> oh, what is that? Oh, it's, it's a part oh, of a little set, game set. Yeah, a little warehouse. So you can visualize what's going on. Well, you're going to visualize some fools hitting the ground, and it ain't going to be us. Or will it? It will not. I got... Let's That's see. the spirit. Oh no, I have negative one willpower, so maybe <laughs> it'll be us. <laughs> or at least me. Right, so, uh... Michael Vasquez says next time find an empty pizza box, guys. Right. I think the pizza idea would have worked. I mean who the biggest question pizza? is besides cursed earth pizza, I mean, what would we go for? For a company well, name. Uh, Jalosha Brothers. Yeah, there you go. The Jalosha Brothers. Jalosha Bros. It's always golden, uh, golden yellow. Yeah, golden crust. How did it get golden? It's part of the secret. <laughs> uh, okay, I mean, R. Quick. Kelly knows. Um, <laughs> okay. okay, so I've got um, the closet. <laughs> okay, guys. So I've got uh. Cheshire and Benny on one side, and I've got um, Jay Pooley on the on the other. Is that okay, or did you guys want to split it up differently? Uh, Do you care? I don't care. Did you uh, post in... something? I haven't yet. I was going to check just oh. check how you guys uh, want to team up before uh, before we do that because it's basically who's who, who's partnering up. Is it going to be um, uh, is it going to be Ch Cheshire and Benny, or is it going to be Jay Pooley and Benny? Uh, I'm I'm sticking with Benny. Benny's my crewmate. Okay, then we'll put Benny next to you, and that will put Cheshire by himself. So, all right, hold on. That's how pirates like it. Right? I mean, you uni right. <laughs> union boys like it from behind. Yeah. We all do better when we all do better together. <laughs> MK's all about it. Woo. How do we get MK on our team? Right. We're eventually one of these uh, during this campaign because this is going to be a big story. We're going to bring some other people in here. I mean, they might be red shirts. Basically, they they died <laughs> in the same episode, but you never know. Oh, I think that'd, that'd be, be great if we had a uh, six pack of red shirts. Yeah, wouldn't that be great if we just had a a thing where we we invite a red shirt to come in, and at some point they are going to die. We just don't know when or how. All right, I'm back. Okay, so uh, did Chaz go Jaloja? Yes. He's still going Jaloja. Can you not hear it? No, I can't hear it at all. <laughs> okay, so I've just posted the picture. Um, hmm. uh, so my wife found me on some Chinese site, um, these really awesome shipping containers, uh, which clearly are anachronistic for where we are, but they're kind of Lego compatible, and I've been looking for an excuse to use these for a while, and they are super cool. And so uh, there you go. Um, you guys can see yourselves there. 
Um, uh, do you have the the picture, JP, on the Cyber Symbiosis Facebook? Let me go on. No, I don't have Facebook. Up. Let me do it. Okay. Cyber Symbiosis. On Facebook. Everybody go to the Cyber Symbiosis site on Facebook. Yes. I know you have Facebook. And I have the Everyone's Orville. got it. <laughs> Singing the Orville episode, episode two. And then... Okay. Um, Uh, okay, I'm back. Uh, it really, it was like a real Jaloja. Hey, uh, Dwight's really upset. <laughs> he doesn't get to see you, Jaloja. <laughs> okay, well, so well, uh, next time I have to do this, I'll switch the mic over to my to my headphone. You can at least hear it. Yes, there you go. Just just like the Naked Gun, uh, Chaz. So I posted the picture in the um, in in the Facebook page. Yep. And, uh, oh, now, there. now do you want to put that up on the screen? Do you need the link? Oh, uh, I see it. That's nice. nice. Uh, who, who is that character? Um, what was his name? Space Willy. Oh, uh, uh, b -b -b Carcarus. Carcarus. Yes. Alex, you got to send me these pictures so we can post them as well. <laughs> um, yes, we will send it on to the book with a face and not the Necronomicon. Correct. Okay, so uh, we hey, we have initiative. Okay, so uh, Alex, you have top initiative. You know that one of the guys is going around, and it looks like he's... Uh, Trying to, to trying to flank you. Um, what's the ability of uh, climbing on one of these crates? Uh, I think it's really reasonable. I would just need a physical training check out of you, or athletics for the D and D purist. Physical training. So it'd be ba based on strength. Okay. Oh, Barry. Oh, uh, okay, so it's. Hey, uh, JP, can we, or can someone, oh, there we go. Hey, JP, post the picture. There Perfect. we go. Um, Took me a but, second to figure that out. Uh, could someone post the link to the Facebook section in the chat? Those so people can go there directly and make comments if they want. The, I, you mean the, you I got mean, it up the right cyber here. Cyber symbiosis page? Yeah, if you could just put it in the chat for people so that if anybody wants to comment on, on, on any of the oh, pictures. Uh, I, I can't because I'm not an admin, but I can put it in the private chat and then. I got it. I got it. Okay. Uh, hey, Woody. Yes, sir. There you go, so, you guys. Marcus, uh, which one is he? Is he the blue one? Uh, he's going to be the guy um, that uh, the guy with his shirt open. Oh, okay, bare chest. Yes. Woo! That is one of the, uh, uh, I believe, the cross gen miniatures. Anyways, go ahead. All right. So, I look awesome. Me and Benny. Look I'm going to. Actually, can I hold my action to yes. when um, either Jay Pulio or uh, or Benny Benny do their action? Absolutely, you absolutely can. So, okay, um, as you do that, uh, you guys see the uh, the bad guys move forward, and they are attempting to spot where you guys are. Um, okay, it looks like they don't, and then uh, the guy. Um, Okay, uh, Alex, can you give me a perception check, please? Sure. What do you got? Got a 22. Okay, uh, hold on a second. Let me... You're back. And I'm trying to figure out how to do cool stuff on the screen while you guys okay. do this. The picture. All right, Alex, you happen to see that um, as you're uh, um, uh, holding it, your position, you see one of the guys um, rushes up and then takes position between the, the stacks, and uh, he, he, he moves in um, to, uh, to, to flank you. Okay. But, but he's not on you yet. Sorry, I was trying to make the picture be sideways. I somehow got a vertical picture. Anyhow. Um, <clears throat> all right. Uh, and then um, the other two simply... Uh, oh, sorry. Um, uh, the, the other two cautiously move forward closer to where J. Puliu and Benny are, but they don't uh, actually attack. And uh, it comes down to JP now. 
Unless okay, Alex want, wants to jump in. All right. What do you need me to do? What do you want to do? You can uh, you can be patient or you can jump out and attack them. Well, if we're going to attack, we need to all do it together. Yes. So uh, uh, if if uh, what were you doing, Alex? Are you being patient? I was. Yeah, I held my action uh, for oh. you guys. OK, uh, well, oh. then, uh, well, so I attack. We all need to attack. OK, well, uh, Benny attacks uh, right right after you. So if you also hold your action, the three of you can jump out all together and open fire. I'd rather all three jump out and open fire because then it'll be such mayhem and our weapons are so much more advanced that might, you know, give them awe. You know, they're in awe. They're like, what's going on? There's lights <laughs> flying in the air. Okay. All right. Is, is, is that the plan? Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay. So let me see. Um, all right. So then, uh, okay. So I want you guys, let's see, roll a couple things here. Okay, um, so here's what happens. You guys all three jump out, open fire, and um, they also had a ready to action, so they open fire as well. However, in the panic, they all end up uh, uh, sh shooting at Benny because he's uh, kind of weird, <laughs> and they, they, they just had to pick a random target. Uh, what is your damage reduction there, Benny, currently? Uh, my damage reduction? Um... Yeah, versus uh, uh, slashing, piercing, or bludgeoning, you have DR5 plus your endurance bonus. Okay, my endurance bonus is plus one, so that would be... DR6? Okay. Uh, yeah. All right, fair enough. Uh, let me open fire. So the uh, um, the the two guys immediately open fire on Benny. Um, uh, do you guys have your force fields up? Yep. We should, yeah, my force field's up. It's always up. Yep. All right, cool. All right, let me roll roll their strike rolls because they open fire on you guys first. Okay, so um, <laughs> uh, Benny, you you take those shots like a champ and suffer no damage. Um, all, all of them just, just just wing you and just deflect off and bounce around. Um, Good job, buddy. Yeah. All right, now now you guys get get to attack. Okay, and I'm going to shoot with both of my pistols. Okay. All right. Get, give me two two uh, strike rolls, Alex. All right. Uh, so first one is 18. Okay, that's going to hit. Next. Second one is 14. Okay, they, they, they both hit. Give me your non-lethal damage. Uh, the, the pistols from um, the Orville, what... Um, they do two, 2d6. 2d6, thank you. Yes. First one, nine points. Okay. Second one, 11. 11, okay. Okay. And then, uh, uh, okay, JP, go. Uh, which die do I roll? You roll a d20 plus a d4 plus your agility bonus, so plus two. Let me get the four. Hold on. Chaz, looks like you got a, um, a cheering squad in the in the chat. Yes. It also yes. looks Thank like you very I have much. I have hit the gym, which has plus two hit points. Is yes, that... uh, but but we're dealing with, with with your strike roll. All right, here we go. So so it's going to be d twenty plus a d four plus two. All together with the plus two is fourteen. Okay, that is just enough to hit. Roll two d six for damage. Yeah. Uh, All right, damage. Here we go. Ugh. All together, four. Four. Uh, okay. Three, you know, three and a one. All right. Now, oh, that actually makes it uh, with with additional plus two, plus two, so it makes oh, it twenty six. All right. So yeah, th this guy's getting nailed. <laughs> He's looking uh, looking pretty weakened. Style. Yeah. <laughs> nice, uh, Benny. You you, you want to you want to uh, open yep. fire? Yep. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Uh. That's a uh, sixteen to hit. Sixteen. That is that is also going to hit. Give me damage. Seven. All right. So uh, three characters opening fire on one target. Uh, you 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 manage to drop the guy and he gets stunned and goes down. Um, all right. Back to the top, uh, Alex. So so in their language. Yeah. I say, 
surrender oh. to the other two. You gonna do an intimidate? Yep. Let's have it. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Oh. Wow. Uh, let's see. If they managed to keep their wits about them. Um, okay, so here's what happens. Uh, one of the guys does surrender. He puts his hands up, dr drops the gun. Um, and then right. the other guy uh, who was uh, trying to flank you decides to make a run for it. Um, Should we throw something at him? <laughs> throw, Can I, throw, um, throw a baton. Yeah. Um, well, let's see. Can I push... Um, so was that a standard action or like what's the kind of order uh, of? Well, I I believe making an intimidation. Um, it, it it depends how you're doing it, but I'm going to call that a minor action. So you could still go after him and shoot. Okay. Because um, <laughs> I was thinking about like knocking the uh, crates over to pin him. Oh. Uh. Well. I, so I've used big shipping containers. The crates would obviously be smaller. Um. I would hope so. Yeah, they are. Uh, I don't know that you'd be in a position though to hit to do that because the crates would still be heavy regardless. Oh, okay. And, and they wouldn't be stacked that high because they don't have forklifts. Right, right. Gotcha. Yeah. It's not Costco. Yeah. I no, mean, that's space spoon. Costco. Yeah, they have yeah. spoon lifts. They haven't invented forks yet. Yeah. <laughs> so <have> forklifts. <laughs> forklifts. Yeah. In, in that case, um, uh, double tap him. Shoot him. Shoot him in the back twice. Oh, all right. With my son. Okay. So you're going to be uh let me see, let me double check how I did that. Um wouldn't backdoor Benny do that? <laughs> uh -huh. Um okay, Alex, you're gonna be shooting with, with disadvantage because he is making uh, the dodge action to escape. Okay. Um which um mechanically is yeah, once again roll roll the D twenty twice and take the low result and then add your other bonuses in. Okay. So is that per gun? Uh, yes, actually. It would okay. Be, yeah. So first one had a 17 on the dice. Second one had a 10. Okay. Uh, so add, add, your, add your bonuses to that. Uh, that being a 15 for the first one. Okay. That's gonna and then the a, second gun. The second gun. 11 on the dice and a 7. Outrageous. You're gonna go with, yeah, you're going to go with the 7. Uh, and that being a total of uh, 14. Oh, really? Okay, well, you hit. And by the point of order, only a four is outrageous. But anyways, um, if you've seen the gamers. Okay, you managed to get in with both. Uh, give me damage, please. All right. Two and a five. So seven on the first uh, shot. Okay. And then two and a one. So three points. Okay, so ten. Okay, uh, you, you you stun him. He staggers, but he but but he manages to keep going. Um, so, all right, JP, you're up next. Um, so, give me just a quick second here. Let me update picture. Hold on. Okay, so these guys are unconscious. And I'll get the new picture and I'll put it up. I'm learning. I'm learning how to stream better with Streamyards. Okay, is that top down the new picture? No, it's nine minutes ago. Michael says, uh, as minor action, Benny okay. spits out the bullets back to the shooters. I love that idea, but we don't want to hurt them, like kill them. Okay, so I've just updated two photos. The first one would have been your your uh, your uh, um, sneak attack. And then the second one is basically where Cheshire has moved over, opened fire. Well, two guns, actually. Nailed the guy. And then it shows you where the, where the rest of you guys are in relation. So he's um, he's got a lot of cover. Uh, so, um, JP, you're up next. What do you want to do? Uh, so who who's uh who do we still got 
there is one of the legionnaires is is running down the length of the warehouse to try to get away. He's basically mm -hmm. he would be heading towards the big double doors to escape. And so you have a long distance shot potentially. Um, I, your guns should still actually, I think, believe they can still hit the range. Um, let me check the range of the guns. Um, so you have light pistols. So so the pistols can e e easily make the shot. It's not a question of the guns reaching him. But it, it there's a lot of stuff in the way, and you can only move 30 feet before making your attack. So what do you want to do? Well, if I can easily reach him with the with the pistol, I want to I want to shoot him. Well, it, it it's just the the pistol has the range, but it's just there's stuff in the way. There's stuff in the way, and I'd yeah, have to run yeah. 30 feet to clear it up. Yeah, he has cover. Your your best shot would be to get on top of of the crates to try to shoot from up there. Oh, but my knees. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's jump up there. Fast action. Get up there. Line up the shot and shoot the guy. All right. Get, give me a physical training check. So just uh, roll roll uh, um, a d20 plus uh, uh, plus your strength only. Strength bonus. Okay. Let's see. D20 gives me a six. And, and, and my strength, strength is on this other page. Uh, 17 plus three bonus. Okay, so that's a nine. Okay, so you, um, all right, so you're you're going to make it up, but you're going to be um, a uh, a little clumsy doing it. So in in this case, you'll be shooting w w without your proficiency die. Okay. Uh, which so, so, which die do I do I roll? So, so in this case, it'll be just a straight d twenty. So you're you're going to be shooting with vulnerability, meaning meaning that that you lose uh, your proficiency die downgrades. So okay. um, so you, so you make it up on top of the stack, you open fire, but you were it's was just a little bit too clumsy to get to get an even shot. That's okay. I'm gonna get this guy. Sixteen. You hit. You're. Uh, all right, get, give me a two uh, d six damage, please. Uh, there's one, there's another. Here we go. I got a lot of die, you guys. All <laughs> shapes and sizes. Uh, five plus two is seven. Okay, seven damage. Oh, that's uh, okay. Seven plus two is nine. Okay, you uh, you nail him in the, in the back, and he goes down and skids skids to a stop on the concrete floor. Yep, I knew it. And uh, you guys take him out. So, all right. Um, so we're just left with Marcus now? Uh, Marcus is unconscious, and the other legionnaire that was with him has surrendering. Um, he's got his hands up, and he's uh, just waiting to see what you guys do. Um, Walk Benny, up to... You've, uh, you've oh. got your gun on him. <laughs> Walk up towards uh, Marcus. Is there like... Um... Something akin to handcuffs. Uh, you guys wouldn't have them, um, but I mean, on this planet, obviously there would be shackles. But he's uh, he doesn't have any on him. Um, I this is the warehouse. Is there any 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 tools available? Twine or anything? Definitely, but he's, uh, um, he he is of course completely unconscious. The uh, the legionnaire is with him, and he says, uh, um, Alex. He he says, uh, okay, well. What happens? Are you going to kill me too? Goes. No, they're just sleeping at the moment. Yeah. Look, Do I, you have I any twine know. or handcuffs? Uh, yeah, we can. Yeah, the, of course. Uh, I, I don't want any trouble with the space pirates. I, I, I know how this works. I'll walk away. Goes. Okay. Good man. Uh, the, our, the handcuffs were furry handcuffs, and he didn't want to be seen that. <laughs> are, are, are you going to let him go, Alex? Um, look over at uh, Barry and say, "Like, it was, you can let him leave." Uh, Benny, you're gonna let let him go, or Benny? Yeah. Are you really sure you want to do that? How do we know he's not going to bring reinforcements? Oh, that's true. Maybe we should look, let the, look at the audience decide. Oh, good point. Yeah. Though I do point and say that uh, their leader is pissing himself right now unconscious. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. the options are let him go or find a way to... Well, he's got handcuffs. We can handcuff him. 
and give them a little conk on the head. Fuzzy shackles. Yeah, Fuzz, fuzzy handcuffs or let them go. Yeah, no, fuzzy handcuffs and Benny's the ball gag. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, um, oh, Mike. okay, well, t tying up the guy is not a problem. And uh, and then the um, uh, life is precious in this universe, all life. <laughs> yep. Um, so uh, let him go. He thinks you're pirates. Someone says, don't let him go. Uh, well, shoot, we do not have a consensus on any of this shit. <laughs> Everyone roll all their dice at once. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, okay. What uh, are you guys gonna let him go or or keep him here for now? I say, uh, what what they would do on on a show is they'd let him go. So that does sound about right. Okay. All right. Well, then he. Because uh, I mean, we got our main target, which is the yeah. more important thing. And also, letting him go might make him uh, uh, side with us later on if we ever need him for anything. He's like, "Well, they do let me go." Okay. Right. Hey, now you're thinking not only like a gamer, but somebody that's thinking steps ahead of your opponent, the game yeah. master. That's uh, right. <laughs> I'm not your opponent. Uh, so the, the <laughs> that's other what you says, say. Uh, okay, so the other berry suggests you keep him there until you talk to Marcus. That actually sounds like a real brilliant idea. Yeah, yeah that's good. All also, right. do we even need to talk to Marcus? We just need to get Marcus out of the picture. So what, like uh, sleeping with the fishes? <laughs> uh, no, we can't do that. We just have to. We have to figure out how to get him to leave, um, or or at least play ball. Well, yeah. Marcus is uh, so tying up. Marcus is not a problem. Um, and the two guys who Marcus was talking to eventually come out uh, from where they were taking cover, and they, they're not armed. And um, one of them, uh, uh, so the guy who's in charge walks up, looks at you guys, and he says, uh, all right, sees everything, and this is our space pirates. The mayor says hello. Thank you. Uh, the last thing we wanted was to interrupt the status quo. We understand uh, what this arrangement does for the community. I and the community is much more important than this greedy space swine. Yeah, uh, what are you gonna do with him? Is I... um, get him to have an understanding or a reassignment. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd be just as happy if you use those weapons to make him go away permanently. Did real quick, did we pick up any dirt on, on this guy that? If, if if the dirt got out that he wouldn't have any power at all and he wouldn't want people to, to know? Uh, not yet. Um, okay. Keyword is yet. Yeah, keyword is yet. But um, uh, but yeah, so, so the owner of the warehouse is basically asking you guys to disintegrate him. Yeah, we can't do that. So... Um, I think we need to figure way. out a way to get him to leave of his own uh, uh, of his own accord because we have the dirt on him and we'll expose him, or we do expose him, and he, he would lose all credibility. All credibility. Yeah. Um, oh, do, do oh. we have anything that could take pictures? Um, Scanners. You, you guys do have the ability to take photographs. Um, as far as replicating the photographs, uh, that's not a difficult thing to do. I mean, that would be, would not, I mean, uh, see, I don't think there would be a printer on board the ship, but I think that you guys would know methods for replicating the images on there. Like, like a shining a bright enough light in the right way could, could it, it imprint it on a piece of paper. I, I think you guys could make it happen. Yeah. Wouldn't there be some sort of minor replicator right on the right on the on on the shuttle? On, on, yeah. No, they specifically don't have replicators. That was actually oh. a key plot point in one of the episodes of the show. But as I said, you guys uh, are uh, particularly you, uh, Benny, being an engineer. I'm pretty sure you can figure something out. Okay. And well, and this is what we should do. Since we don't have any dirt on him yet, perhaps we should create some. <laughs> yeah, something where he so, just knows he's stuck. He's he, yeah. he he can't fight it. 
so hey, J J Pulio, maybe you should cuddle with him. Well, I can probably uh, give those pheromones to him and one and the other guard. Oh no! <laughs> and then the two of them have a scandalous affair that does not go over well in this society. No. <laughs> I can yeah. see that not going over well at all. And I can even I can even uh, 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 sway the flow of the juices, where the where Marcus is the bottom, the inferior one according to society. <laughs> oh, so no. they come off as weak. Okay. Um, I I I see you're familiar with your Greek history. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Even predates Roman times. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, you are getting some votes for pheromones, of course. Um, Mike has has a vote that Benny should basically pull a Star Trek II tactic and put a piece of himself in the guy's ear. <laughs> <laughs> Earworm. Okay. Uh, walking up and infecting both of them, all the, the two unconscious ones, and letting them have some alone time would not be an impossible thing. I think that would be a gimme. I'm gonna roll for pheromones. <laughs> we, we don't Actually, have to I already roll. got the I already got the pheromones. Yeah, yeah, we don't have to roll. I'm I'm gonna say that that was just twinkle, twinkle, little star. Yeah, that was gonna be a gimme. Two going. Yeah, let let the chef cook. All right, and then okay, so they wake up in a in in a private room, feeling uh uh like they need to ruin some towels. Yeah, and we're scanning everything. Okay, uh, video footage. Good lord. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Is is that the plan, guys? I'll leave it up to you and yeah. the audience and whoever. Uh, apparently, one of uh, see, so uh, it sounds like one of your audience is not approving of this tactic, but I think that's what's happened. Oh, all we're right. gonna we're gonna let them go all the way. Yeah. All right. Okay. So that's a good thing easier. Okay, so guys, we're we're gonna call this a fade to black moment because I don't like role playing some of this stuff. Okay, so uh, an hour later, uh, these Dang guys. An hour. Are... That's a long time. Yeah. Well, we're just. Uh, I'd say two and a half minutes later. <laughs> yeah, but they also they also have to wake up, and you guys oh, have okay. to get them to wherever they're going to be. So okay. yeah, it looks like we we got some pheromone votes. Okay, so. Uh, a bit, a little bit later, uh, you guys uh, find these two gentlemen sitting alone together in a room where you left them, feeling extremely awkward and uncomfortable about what just happened. And and you guys have video. That's right. Um, not and we brought a sketch artist in. <laughs> this is hardly the most dignified <laughs> tactic I've ever seen in a game. <laughs> if it works, it's memorable. It works. Yeah. And we didn't even have to roll. God damn it, Dwight. Quit fibbing. <laughs> <laughs> Dwight's lying, by the way, everybody. <laughs> He's probably laughing his ass off right now. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, yes, I, I think this tactic would work because the um, the awkwardness of it and <laughs> the fact that they 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 were yeah thanks but yes uh, i just wish we were closer to the town square uh, then well, we could just left them alone in the town square and then everybody oh. would have seen it well you could do that too are you basically talking like oh. mash, mash where, where where you drop a wall and they get caught like that yeah then you don't have to worry about trying to figure out the oh. whole video projection. oh i think that's brilliant because one we're not using technology from space <laughs> we're allowing it just to be in true i was and, going to go and, natural process but uh yes a pheromone and, process to it mm -hmm. and and then this way you guys don't have some smells in here a, a, a bunch of sickos with with video cameras um all right well then that goes yeah, but then we still we still have what well, we have to make the point marcus has to know that he that was, was set up that by superior people and yes. it is it is his time to go oh. and not come back. Yeah. Well, actually, the the label that I use for my uh, winery, mm -hmm. that is what I'm going to have on him. Oh. He gets branded? Yeah. All right. 
Oh, no, so, that's a whole different ball of wax, right? Yeah. But I All mean, right. that will get him to know that it's like who he basically. Yeah. Who, who he crossed. Well, whatever the case, uh, when when the wall comes down in the middle of, 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 of a public area and he gets caught doing the deed, that essentially ruins his career completely. And also being caught, he's not going to be like, oh, we're caught. Let's let's hide. He's like, no, he's so obsessed because they're pheromones. He wants to keep going. Yeah, he, he, won't, he won't be. They won't be torn away from each other. Or they'll try not to be torn away from each other. Which right. would be even more embarrassing and be a bigger story. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I think this is effective. I think Marcus is no longer going to be in the picture. Um, yes, and uh, take my. I wouldn't away. want pictures of that anyway. <laughs> 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 All right. So the next day, uh, the the scandal rocked the town, and uh, apparently there's a, a request for a new centurion, and the mayor is quite grateful. And has uh, arranged for you guys to have a fast chariot to get you where, where you need to go. See All if right. I can use some of my reputation to uh, get the previous guy that was sent uh, to the front lines. Mm -hmm. That may be harder to do, but at least the um, uh, the the uh, the mayor is going to have uh, somebody else to deal with. And definitely tell the mayor of. If it becomes the same situation, I will take care of it again. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if the town can take it. <laughs> well, right. buggery if I know. Yeah. All right. So um, let me take a quick peek here at... Um, let me look at how long you're going to be in, in heat here. Um, forever. No, no. The forever. entire campaign... <laughs> God, I hope not. Um, let's see where we have. There was where is Reteptians? Here we go. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. Uh, my pheromones are rocking. Let's check my dipstick. I don't need <laughs> lubrication. Good lord. Yeah. Um, okay. So. All right, got it, got it, got it. Um, okay, I get to roll for how long it lasts. Okay, um, so JP, you know that it could be for as uh, a week or more. Um, oh, I know that, that you're going to be in heat. No, oh. if it's more than a week, I had to call the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyways, uh, so unfortunately, uh, okay, so 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 the chariot you guys have will be pulled by one of those horse creatures. And it's got two wheels, and it's going to be very fast. And it is, um, uh, it's big enough that all three of you can ride on it, but it's going to be hard for you guys to keep yourselves separate. So, okay. oh, you're all going to be uh, touch. You're all going to be touching me. <laughs> what are you going to do? Well, so, well, uh, I don't know. I, I can't. I'm small enough. Can't I sort of just ooze over onto the back of one of the whatever sort of animals that yeah. are acting as horses and? Clean well, that's the still leaves me and cat. I probably have to be uh, uh, sitting on the horse, but then I'm touching the horse. Well, well, the, 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 love me. the way a chariot works, you have one person hey. standing up front who is going to be, uh, um, you know, running the animals, and then there'll be a, an open space in the back where the other two can ride, and um, it's it's going to be a standing up uh, vehicle, but it's uh, um. It, you know, it's not going to be a sit-down ride, but it's designed so that you guys uh, are fast and you can you know c c cover the distance quickly. So, but, as the pilot, I can I can pilot the chariot, and then and yeah. then the other two can sit in the back, separate from yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. So there will be some separation, but they're going to be basically downwind from you. Um, Ooh. But but you you want to be getting you know getting good at at, at you know piloting uh, you know somebody you know, this kind of a vehicle, right? So. Uh, so it's going to have, it's, it's just one of those situations. Um, the, the only really good way around it, uh, to avoid this would be essentially if <laughs> Alex was wearing a breather unit, so he didn't accidentally breathe it in. And, uh, but also uh, he could get on their skin and absorb in it, Yes. Well, that, that, that is true. Uh, but breathing it in is really the bigger issue at this point. Yeah. So well, I mean, um, still have that, um, from the first episode, the breather. Oh yeah, well yeah. The, then then you, you you should be fine, and Betty will just have to hunker down. Yeah, and so maybe maybe he just being not in full contact with me, uh, 
maybe he just becomes more friendly towards me, not for oh, a little while, not ben. En enamored. Benny? Uh, no, uh, Cat. Oh, Cat. Well, the other thing is Cat, uh, knowing that you're in heat, would have a better ability to resist it, but it not, would not be immune. Um, so... All right, but he, but he, he he does have a breathing apparatus, so he should be okay. Oh yeah, um, Mike says to put Benny in a Yeti cooler, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then uh, uh, Dwight wants to see Jay Pulio doing the fan dance from Star Trek Five. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what that dance. <laughs> oh, her is dance trap. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, sure. I don't dance. You can dance if you want to. Nope. You can yeah, leave your friends behind. Uh, oh, there you go. But if they don't dance, they're no friends of mine. <laughs> That's yep. right. Yep, yep, yep. All right. So, um, all right. So, you guys, uh, is there anything you guys want to take with you? Um, that that like as far as equipment or anything. Now, now's your chance because you're about to leave leave the shuttle behind. Well, then we need. Uh, I would think we need. Uh, oh well, we have all of our stuff that we already have, but we can grab some other stuff that's nearby. Yeah, like like for example, uh, the the shuttle has a med kit. Um, it, it it also has uh, you know a tool bag. Um, you guys can grab both of those things. Uh, you guys would be able to get backpacks because they they have survival gear. So you guys have backpacks that that that, that you could put the put the supplies in. Um, I would want all of it. And can we store anything on top of the little horse lizard? Uh, well, the horse uh, the horse could be equipped. Well, the horse would not be carrying any things, but there would be like uh, you have enough room in the chariot that you could store some extra stuff. But you're going to want to basically carry things that you can store in your survival packs. Okay, I want I want everything that we could possibly store in it: uh, tool kit, med kit, um, okay. survivor well, gear. Of course, we'd want all that. Well, well, okay. Um, so, yes, sir. The, the uh, mountain that we're heading to mm -hmm. pretty steep, or is it more like a hill? It, uh, it's, I think it'd be like probably comparable to like, I, I think of Mount Rainier, but like, cause Mount Rainier is kind of like, which we have here is more of a rounded top, right? Where, where it used to be a volcano. So it's, right. it's, so, it's so you have a situation, volcano, but right, right. But th think of it like in, in, the, in that case, you have a situation where it had erupted at one point and yes. then the caldera slowly filled in. Right. So you, you have that kind of a mountain. Where it 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 was a it was an active volcano may still be but 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 the top is rounded, as um, as opposed to the uh, you know being um, like a steep uh, a steep sharp one. So I definitely want to say like get some uh, climbing gear from the town. Okay. Because I mean, like, if worst case scenario, if we do need to um, uh, get into an area where we need to like have rope, uh, piston. You know, various I, I things know. that are just basically like. Um, well, it, it, if I may, that's a lot of gear to carry with you. And if you approach the mountain, there would be towns that are used to dealing with mountainous conditions, and you would be able to get okay. plenty of climbing gear when you get there. What, that, since we're going so far out of town, there might not be very many locals there. Are we able to bring jetpacks? Because I'm proficient at jetpacks. You can absolutely bring your jetpack. All right. We need to get some more jetpacks for these for the rest yes. of the team. So right. you're either wearing a jetpack or you're wearing a backpack. So in your particular case, you're probably going to be carrying like a duffel bag. And and um, and yes, Barry's correct. Some of the equipment could be held inside of uh, of, of Benny. Oh yeah, I can backdoor Benny. Yeah, <laughs> Cre cre create a cavity and store some things. Um, so here's the question: uh, Benny could love to be used as a purse. Yeah. So so we know that. Uh, uh, Benny's going to have the toolkit. Um, who's carrying the med pack or the med kit? I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then you guys will uh, distribute the the food and and survival supplies equally. Um, yeah. You 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 guys will have a survival tent. You guys, of course, have clothes and you know rations and so forth. Um, and then uh, um, so you had two extra guns in the ship. Are you taking those with you, or are you leaving them on the ship? Because the ship will be locked. Nobody should be able to get into it. Are they the I, same I type of blasters, or are they bigger? They're smaller? the same kind. S same I think kind we of should blaster. take them because because I might need to use them as tools. Okay, you yeah. can totally do that. Or one might fail, or blow up, or get taken, or something like okay, that. Okay, well th extra. then we'll hand one of those off to Benny and one off to Jay Pulio. All right. So you guys have backup pew, pew. weapons. Jay and... Pew Pew. Ooh, yeah. That's right. All right. So. Um, uh, and then, uh, uh, okay, so uh, we're also going to say that that your uh, while 
while waiting your 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 turn to get you know to get the chariot, you of course been practicing and get, getting lessons and how to drive um, from uh, uh, locals. So um, what we're gonna do, uh, JP, is each day that you are um, using the, uh, this, you're gonna basically roll a willpower check, and okay. then um, at the point when you successfully roll a natural twenty, you will attain the skill. Um, okay. to, to drive these things, or you can simply pick it at the appropriate time when you level up, but alternatively, but you, you will just have a skill check you do each day. And then at some point you'll probably get to get the hang of it and develop the ability to drive uh, a chariot proficiently. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I'm in, a proficient the, pilot of all things. Yes. But in, in the meantime, uh, it'll just simply be based upon your willpower stat since you're uh, controlling animals. So um, oh, I got a horrible willpower stat. What is it? Negative one. Okay. Well, do your best. Um, <laughs> I will. Okay. So, uh, so uh, uh, unless there's anything else you guys need to resolve before you get out of town, um, you guys uh, hop onto the chariot oh. and uh, Jay Pulio get, um, gets in the driver's sorry, seat. Sorry to interrupt, yes. but yes, sir. to help to help JP, I have a pretty good will willpower stat, and I am. Uh, a proficient pilot. So, is there any way that I could help him out? Um, in this case, no, because he's trying to learn it, um, and okay. it deals with like not. It, it's a different kind of thing where he's learning how, how to control animals as opposed to learning how to um, to drive something. Yeah. And we're um, dealing with the whole pheromone issue. Yes, and so, well, actually, the pheromone issue probably would help. Um, I I would say the fair the pheromone issue would probably make the animal more compliant. Um, would translate into a bonus because the animal probably would be more more interested in you know would respond to the doing what I say yeah there you yeah, go it might be more yeah so it might may well, actually make it easier in that case what about like having it where it's a different stat like charisma um just a thought I would actually flip it so that he gets a plus one bonus instead of a negative one bonus oh wait so, a minute my will pa I was reading the wrong thing let's see. No, my willpower is eight plus okay. negative one. Okay, so so yeah, so at, at an eight, you, you're you're operating with a with a, with a, well because you thought having a low willpower was funny. <laughs> so oh yeah, uh, no, but it's, it's okay. Me yeah, and you, cookies. You don't you don't want to be good at everything, so it's okay. Uh, with with the pheromones factoring in, we're going to say that it cancels out and adds a small bonus, so it'll make the the beast more more likely to cooperate. Um, it occurs to me we need to name this creature, and it would not be reptilian horse. Does anybody want to give yeah. this uh, this creature a um, uh, a name or like what what kind of creature it is? Yeah, the audience, we need you guys to name this uh, lizardy dragon horse that cannot fly but can run like a horse. Yeah. Do what? What are we going to call this creature? And and for that matter, what what do you guys want to name it? Since it'll be wit with you guys for a bit. <laughs> I don't see any sea biscuits in there. <laughs> <laughs> sea biscuits and gravy. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, any, well, anybody? First one that comes in is going to be it. Oh, there we go. Draco horse strider. Oh, strider. the first one is strider. <laughs> That's okay, a good a, one. A strider is from um, uh, it, uh, from the dark crystal. Yeah. Dragling. I love dragling. We're doing that. Um, oh, there you go. Draggling. Okay. Jay Pulio, the horse whisperer, and draggling. Draggling. Okay, so what do you guys want to name the horse, though? Like, what are you going to name the beast? What What is it called? Ooh, uh, Strider. Like Strider. From, uh, Pax. Indiana. <laughs> uh, Strider. Okay, we can call it Strider. All right. Strider so, the draggling. There you go. Okay. Very good. Lazarus, nice. So you guys, uh, yeah, you you hit the reins and you get going, and you guys uh, take off uh, in, uh, in in into the noonday sun. Yeehaw! Um, you guys will be um, heading in the direction of one of the larger cities um, in the um, in, in the area. So there is actually a big question. So um, a trip like this, there's a number of roads that you guys can take. Uh, mm -hmm. you, obviously, you can go off road, but it's going to be much slower if you avoid major communities. Uh, all of the roads. Uh, basically just eventually encounter uh, various villages, towns, and eventually major cities on the way. So there's going to be um, no way to avoid that. And you aren't necessarily um, going to just be hard traveling for a week 
uh, or however long, but like you're not well, going to be like on this. You are going to need to stop and sleep and take breaks. Well, I do want to say because this is the Orville universe. There's the Orville episode called "The Road Not Taken." Okay, hmm. which makes me think I want to take whatever the road not taken is. Well, the road not taken would be not taking a road at all. Yeah, uh, but 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 your trip's going to be a lot faster if you stay yeah. on on the main roads. Do you want to go fast or do you want to go? Uh, what more adventurous? I don't know. Who knows well, where the adventure is? I mean, based off of what we need to do with like find your fallen comrades, we should do fast. But just like an episode, TV episode, I mean, there should be a lot of shenanigans and like you know mm. side quests, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, we have no reason to go. Uh, we want to go. We, right now, we just have the reason to get there as fast as possible. So I guess yeah. we go that direction, and then whatever happens, yeah. happens. Yeah. Maybe um, uh, if if you can find them, if if you can afford them, you can hire the crew of the Redenbacher. That's right. The Redenbacher. Da, da, da. Uh. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, you guys travel um, for a uh, better part of the day, um, past a couple of villages, um, you know, uh, along. And then as uh, the, the, the sun is setting, um, you guys end up encountering another major town. Uh, based upon the information you were told, um, so this town is about the halfway point. And, um, and by uh, tomorrow evening, miles. if you... Sorry, what was that? I said 50 miles. Yes. Uh, well, it wouldn't be quite that much, but like, um, you know, by, by tomorrow evening, if you guys um, uh, keep going, you'll eventually hit a major city um, by, uh, um, by, 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 by by the end of tomorrow. And then it would be another couple days travel um, if you guys just did nothing but drive to get, get to the base of the mountain. And so... Um, uh, heading into the evening, as I said, there, 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 there's a, a, another town. Uh, if you guys want to just keep driving through the night, uh, your well, your horse won't be able to take it. But um, you, you, you could definitely stop here and 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 get rooms for the night at a local inn if you would like. I think only to keep the horse happy and alive, yeah. we should we should pull over. Yeah. Otherwise, just, I would say keep going. Well, if you guys run it to death, it will literally die. And, yeah. and and the horse now has a name. Uh, the dragling has a name. You, you, you Strider. Have to keep, yeah, you, you have to keep it now. So, but uh, yeah, you guys uh, pull in. Um, there are a couple of travelers inns. Uh, you know, they have bars and restaurants and so forth. And uh, it would be easy enough to stop in and uh, get um, you know g- grab a room and 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 uh, um, and and uh, a, a good meal. And 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 they all have boarding for the horse. Yes. Uh, well, they, they, um, yes, uh, the, your, your better ends do, do have stabling space and they have places where you, where you can park a chariot. And so, some of them just have also like watering holes in front where you can put the, you know, the rope around the pole so the horse can't get away. I think we need one that can hold our chariot and take care of the horse. Okay. Well, uh, for, for a room at an inn with food, um, uh, they're going to charge uh, 10, 10 gold per person. And they'll charge another five for stabling services. I'll take care of it. Okay. Yeah, you're the only one that can. <laughs> and and Dwight, did you eat Dwight, your gold? <laughs> I ate it. Dwight uh, says you guys need a steam room. Uh, uh, oh, the pheromones are starting to wear down a little bit. Yeah. All right. So, alrighty then. Um, so you guys uh, walk into a tavern. Um, it's not going to be the Tarvin Tavern. We need we need a name for a tavern. Uh, I, I should just have a tavern list of cool names. Um, oh, it's the Steam Room. There you go, the Steam Room. That's a great name for a tavern. They don't yeah. have air conditioning. It's 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 uh, <laughs> pre pack. All right. So uh, you guys walk in. Um, you've uh, uh, s- stabled your dragling, um, and uh, you guys. Uh, uh, pentacle torch. Oh my God! Thank you, Jesus. Um, so, uh, anyways, um, yeah, you guys walk in. Uh, the, the 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 tavern is extremely busy. There's probably 50 people in here. It's a it's a hot spot. But they also had like you know good good prices on rooms. So you guys uh, have rooms upstairs when you're ready. 
Um, you go in. Uh, Benny gets a few weird looks, but no, nobody, you know, does much. And uh, you guys get 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 your drinks, your food, and a table, and you guys have a seat to eat. And All right. A, there is a um, a lot of chatter in here tonight. A lot of people talking, and a lot, you know, a lot of excited. But there is an interesting rumor that piques your guys' interest um, as as you guys are winding down for the night. There is talk of a strange monster. Um, there's uh, so, someone's claiming it's uh, that 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 it attacked and killed their livestock and oh, uh, drained their blood. But they're talking about some sort of a scaly creature with white skin that does not. All right, so. So this albino chupacabra <laughs> is the side quest. That sounds like a krill to me. Yes, it does. White and scaly. I, I'm still going with uh, albino chupacabra. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I, I, I like this name. I wish we'd had that one sooner, but the flaming steamer. That is... Uh. <laughs> That sounds like a prank you you uh, you leave at someone's door. Yep. So uh, it is exactly what that sounds like. So um, we're we're gonna call it there on 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 the revelation of, of your next side quest um, that there's a, a an evil monster with white scaly skin killing a local livestock, and it doesn't come out during the day, and uh, and we're 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 gonna have to call it right there. I also wonder. Uh... The, that was great, you guys. That was awesome. That was a, a great place to end it. And we also have a, uh, uh, an allude. We're alluding to maybe there being a krill next time. Yeah. I wonder, because we kind of chatted about this while you were doing something, is what if we had, um, I mean, we'd have to find the right person that would fit, but uh, a guest star. Whenever we uh, a guest player that basically plays a red shirt, a, a one and done type character, it's like well, just... that, yeah, th that is something I'd also been thinking about. Um, but uh, since it's, a, a, I guess we can probably mention it, it's not going to work out, unfortunately, for for PJ to join us. So I was actually wanted to talk to you about a maybe still having a fourth permanent uh, member of the team. But um, yeah, yeah, uh, I I would. They you. won't fit on the chariot though. No, so that would have to be addressed. But yeah, I definitely would like to. Um, I like the idea of bringing in the uh, guest people at some point with as one and done. So I think that would be good. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd say let's work on uh, one permanent player. Yeah, um, I have some ideas too, and I know you have ideas. And then I have I have one idea specifically, actually. Well, there you go. Well, that yeah. we'll probably go with that, and then figuring out a system maybe on Patreon, patrons, just like I have. We are the Orville, where patrons come on and yes. we talk about the Orville. Have uh, patrons uh, sign up to become one uh, red shirts. Basically, they they yeah. play a character at some point during the story every episode. I I, I like that a lot. I think that would work. Um, and they don't always have to be uh, union characters. It could be a local. Um, obviously, that would put the burden on me to generate an NPC for them to play. But yeah, um, maybe they'll, maybe they'll play a dragling. Maybe, Maybe you never know. Yeah. Maybe they'll play yeah. a krill, a kalon, something. Yeah, something. It, it depends. That's what we got. Yeah, no, I, I I like that idea a lot. And maybe some of these could be uh, celebrities from the series who might want to join us. That would be cool. That's true um, too. That is a possibility. Well, you'll be or talking from to, another series. Uh, yes. Well, you'll be talking to one of them coming up. You could extend the offer. Oh, that's true too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we'll be we'll have a special guest star. Uh, June twenty second, mm -hmm. which is my birthday as well. I'll be talking yeah. to uh, uh, Renee Pazoda, I think your last name is. Yeah. I'm, I'm forgetting, but she played uh, the real estate agent in the episode Twice in a Lifetime, trying to sell Charlie and uh, and Isaac a house, <laughs> which was a great great scene. Anyway, she's going to be joining live on June twenty second, uh, talking to me about her work on the Orville and being on the show and just about her love for the Orville. Cause she's before she got cast to be on the Orville, she was a fan of the Orville. So we'll be talking about all that. Um, There's so much stuff going coming up on talking the Orville. And then June 23rd, I'm able to reapply for monetization, which will hopefully make it where I don't have to work my side job 72 hours a week. And I can start doing more live shows and making more videos. But of course we'll be, we'll be playing this campaign for 2024, we'll see how much story you got for us, Woody. <laughs> oh, that's not a problem. Um, oh, hey, good. so uh, Tipsy Flipper, my friend Dwight, is making several suggestions for celebrity guests he'd like to see. Um, 
Ron Jeremy. I don't know if he's available anymore. <laughs> Didn't he get in trouble for something? I ran, I, uh, I, I rubbed elbows with Ron Jeremy once a long time ago. I was going down an escalator. He was coming up an escalator. Really? And that, yeah, and I know jokes. People are got jokes forming in their head with that little analogy, yeah. but and he but, pheromoned uh, you. Yeah, he pheromoned yeah. me. No, yeah. pheromones won't do it for that guy. But yeah, it, it, it reminds me of how how I met Stan Lee. Um, oh, very good. So, oh, so, nice. Was this I love what you it. were thinking of the eyes? Yeah, that's great. I love it. And then, uh, okay, nice. so. Um, so I, red hair. I don't want to jump in and just say a date this time. We'll have to we'll just schedule it for the next episode. But when I said let's do it on the 18th, I had a show that weekend. <laughs> That's why we had to delay it. One Actually, week. I don't for wanna, I don't for June, again. for June, I only have one day available. Okay, let let oh. me see. Uh, what 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 day is that, JP? The 29th, Saturday, the 29th, same time, same place. Okay, hold on a second. Let let me check our, our, our June thing. Um, okay, so we are going to be at the Summer Con in June, and that's going to be oh, good. Uh, that's the previous weekend, so we could probably do that. Um, so so let's let's tentatively put ourselves down for the 29th, and then we'll confirm it. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll confirm, but hopefully you guys watching it, we're going to do the 29th because on the first, which is next week, uh, we are doing We Are the Orville. Uh, the week after that is going to be another live show of the Union, uh, mm -hmm. where I have uh, uh, leaders in the Orville fandom uh, to talk about season four of the Orville, another Orville goodness. The 15th, I'm off. I have a family thing to do. The 22nd. The Orville Spotlight with Renee from the episode Twice in a Lifetime. And then hopefully the 29th, if we all are able to make it, will be uh, a, a continuing adventures of Tales of the Union, uh, the Orville RPG game. Yeah, with and I also say, um, next weekend, if anybody happens to be in the in, in the area of Spokane, uh, Washington, uh, or, or Idaho for that matter, which is close, uh, Alex and I will be at the Lilac C uh, City Comic Con. Uh, so if you wanted to come out and say hi, that would be super cool. Do Spokane or do Spokane not? There is no try. You got to <laughs> get true. there, you guys. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's basically the major city on the far uh, eastern side of our state, but it's close close to Idaho, so we get a lot of people coming across the border for the show. So uh, if anybody wants to come meet us, that would be great. I would love to meet people that have enjoyed the show. And maybe we'll have Gary Busey on 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 the show next month. I've worked with Gary Busey before. It was a long time yeah. ago. You don't want him on the show. You won't be able to <laughs> wrangle him. You cannot wrangle the dude. Yeah, yeah. You you, you need a little discipline in, in uh, when you play RPGs. Yeah, just a little bit. I have very little, but I I, I try to rein it in. And uh, Al, uh, Chaz and Alex, do you guys have anything you want to plug? Also, all of us. I got all of our uh, links in the description of this video. If you want to, if you want to uh, stock any of us. But do you guys got anything going on? <laughs> Uh, well, other than the show, just that, just that right now. Though, though, I do want to again say thanks to Red Shark Miniatures for um, providing the the miniature for for Benny, and you can uh, definitely track him down on, on Etsy. He claims to have uh, templates for ten thousand miniatures that he can uh, produce. Oh, and, wow. and the reason why I work with this guy is because he doesn't steal designs from 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 uh, 3D sculptors. He actually uh, pays licensing fees legitimately. So oh, he's, wow. Yeah, pretty honest. Like a lot. It turned out a lot of those guys they just get all the STL files and then just make them and the designer get, get screwed out in the deal. So yeah, this guy's a quality dude. Um, if you want to order minis, he's, he's the right guy to talk to. I want a mini draggling. I'm sure we can find something. Um, yeah. Hey, writer, if you're listening, do we have something like that? Um, <laughs> actually, wait a minute. I think I do. Uh, I think I have a miniature that might work. Um, I'll have to look at what I got. I've got a number of options. I, I have a vast collection <laughs> of stuff vast. I've picked up over the years. So, all right. All right. Um, Any parting thoughts from uh, Jazz and uh, our chin Jazz, Chaz and Alex? <laughs> <laughs> He's on the uh, Jazz. Well, just just that I'm having a great time. I, I'm so glad to be on here and and you know to interact the, with the with the audience when I can. In terms of promoting, I, I, I kind of sort of have half a promotion. Um, I'm, I am the editor for another uh, 
group of people, uh, another uh, RPG player group. Nice. Now, I can't talk too much about it because um, the guy that I'm working with is in the process of uh, setting up a Patreon. He doesn't uh, necessarily have a specific YouTube channel set up for it yet. But that's going to be that's going to be coming. And I have another thing that I'd like to promote, but I, I need to do some more stuff on my end before I can legally promote it and talk to you folks. About well, it. maybe but on the next stream, you'll have all coming. the specifics. All right. Stuff is coming. Are, are, yes, stuff is coming. Are, are you referring to Mark's by any chance? Yes. Yes. Uh, good dude. Also, <laughs> I like that guy. So, yes. All right. Cool. Well, um, then I guess maybe we sign off and maybe we, uh, we can all chat behind the scenes about uh, tracking down our fourth party member. All right. Uh, sounds good. I'll see you guys on the other side. And everyone else out there, thanks for joining us. Uh, you can support uh, Talking the Oroville. We're going to be doing a lot of prep for season four coming up whenever it comes up, but we know it's coming up. But no official news for the public yet. But us behind the scenes people know that there is going to be a season four of the Oroville. So you can support with the links below and support all of us with the links below. And we'll see you next time. And uh, remember, we all do better when we all do better together. Love you. Bye-bye.